quote from the end credits of this movie i thought that was part of the intro for a second <laughs> nope that's just me i'm mally moore i'm <laughs> clipping my nasty ass toenails <laughs> i'm nathan simmons and i have waited for this night <laughs> this is the silver linings playlist the show where we try to find the silver linings in some of cinema's bleakest endings and also the spookiest endings. The spookiest endings, yeah. And this is a pretty spooky ending. It's guys, pretty spooky movie. Spooky movie full of scamps, full of scares. So many scamps. You missed a beautiful <laughs> chance for your intro. You oh, could have said, I'm Nathan Simmons and I've got peanut butter on my penis. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? I did. Well, synergy. Wait, hold up. Question. Was it creamy or chunky? <laughs> it, it, it's chunky, of course. Nice. Uh, and as we as we established last season, Michael Myers can drink that shit straight. <laughs> Just <laughs> chugging it. This is a very peanut butter heavy franchise. Yeah. I, feel like. <laughs> I, sh I think it should be noted that Toby Huss, who, who plays uh, Ray, the dad mm -hmm. in this movie, was uh Artie in the adventures of pete and pete mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> which like when i looked up his acting credits my head exploded i was like <laughs> why do i know this guy why do i know his voice mm -hmm. <laughs> insane do you think the peanut butter line in this movie is a callback to halloween six that they knew <laughs> they knew <laughs> yeah i hope so well thank you uh for tuning in everyone if this is your first time tuning into the silver linings playlist welcome you are joining us right here in the middle of spooky month mm -hmm. it is a tradition around here that when we do a season that falls in october at uh every episode that month is horror themed horror related mm -hmm. and this is four of five seasons that we've done a halloween episode yeah yeah what 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 have we done halloween six halloween, halloween three, three uh rob zombie oh yeah and the og no no we have yet to cover the original oddly enough oh we did three rob zombie six and there was another oh and this one so that makes four or five we yeah. skipped one season interesting yeah yeah still have not really talked about a friday or nightmare yeah <laughs> really and i'm okay with that yeah because we are talking about a halloween movie mm -hmm. it only makes sense that we bring back in our own dr loomis <laughs> noted <laughs> I don't want to say expert, but lover for sure. Yeah. Bring him back. He was last seen, last heard on the Halloween 6 episode. The originator of the peanut butter chugging line, yeah. actually, if memory serves. <laughs> yeah. He is a madman. Just stuck around for some reason. That one light has stuck around so much. But yes, please <laughs> welcome the return of JT Kelly. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm I'm really happy to be here. Um, I like to thank the Academy for that peanut butter line. It came from. Did you hire Ghost Riders? <laughs> no, no, sir, no, sir. That's all me. That's gonna be like in the um when I die, uh -huh. like the things they look back on. It's that's gonna be etched on your tombstone. Hey, one time he said this joke on a podcast. And <laughs> yeah, the in memoriam. <laughs> people went fucking nuts, and then I'm gonna run through the cemetery screaming, "I shot him six times! <laughs> <laughs> I shot him in the." Hot. Do you think Michael's a GIF guy or a Skippy guy? No, Michael. No, he's GIF, dude. Are you? I don't know, man. Fuck a Skippy. Are you kidding me? Uh, a scamp of this level, Michael eats Peter Pan peanut butter. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Actually, actually, I take that back. Okay, um, Halloween Four's Michael Myers yeah. uh, is a Skippy guy. Okay. That's a Skippy, Michael. Absolutely. Oh, that's a Skippy guy. <laughs> the one who always looks like he's asking who me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Halloween Resurrection, Michael, though, is like he's eating that Reese's peanut butter, uh, which was disgusting. And I, yeah. yeah. And then Rob Zombie's uh, Michael Myers eats goobers, yes. like the mix uh, between yes. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. I was just going to say the same thing. No, that motherfucker is just like he's eating peanuts in water. <laughs> yeah, he's eating <laughs> almond butter and washing it down with water. Yeah, he, he's eating peanuts like they were fucking cereal. <laughs> he's popping peanuts like Advil or something. <laughs> he's like Fox Mulder just dropping the shells everywhere.
I, I feel for the people that did not listen to our Halloween 6 episode because they're going to be so lost. Well, that's why they got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> you got two and a half hours of us dissecting one of the worst movies. Uh, so. And I'm so excited. I'm so because that was my first Halloween episode with you guys. And yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. those sons of bitches <laughs> had me on that one. Well, we brought you back for a good one. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm so happy to be able to talk about the good. So uh, if you're not familiar with our show, we'd like to take movies such as Halloween from 2018, where I would say in this case, the movie does have a a like, yay, they did it kind of ending. Right. But also, <laughs> it's not a happy ending. And there's lots of there's some lingering questions, definitely. Oh, yeah. yes. Which I think are apparent by the fact that there are two sequels coming out to this movie. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we like to take movies like this and we like to dissect them and try to find a positive, a silver lining at the end of the movie mm-hmm. so you can walk away with uh, with some hopeful thoughts. And we, we should mention like. You know, the the reason we did Halloween 6 last year was because Halloween Kills was supposed to come out then. Yeah, that's true. And it's supposed to drop the week that we're dropping this episode. So fingers crossed. It yeah. seems like this is the one. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It seems like it, man. I hope so. I, ne- I need that movie. Maybe evil dies this week. <laughs> maybe because I because I bought my tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe also it's the three year anniversary since this movie came out. Yeah. So it's almost like bond movies like we're getting them so far apart now right right which also is dealing with some hiatus issues a little bit <laughs> in fact Dan- daniel craig is cast to, to play laurie in the next one <laughs> oh, isn't that wild good for him yeah yeah could you imagine him in the the wig that jamie lee curtis wears in this <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but doing his character from logan lucky yes nice. <laughs> i love it love it i'm gonna get michael nicked <laughs> every time he kills he ascends <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then instead of Loomis, it's just his character from Knives Out. He plays <laughs> dual roles. I love this. Let's make this movie. Ah, <laughs> uh, suspect foul play. I mean, Halloween colon Knives Out. Oh, Not a bad no. title. It's almost bad. It's almost as bad, good as you know Halloween, Halloween kills. kills. Yeah, <laughs> that's better than some titles we have gotten. Well, let's let's get down to this because I think we discussed this, but I need to get JT's input on this. <sighs> JT, oh, God. Halloween kills. Is that adjective? noun like the type of kills are halloween or is it noun verb Mm -hmm. where it's halloween's doing the killing oh or is it yeah or is it these are the kills happening on halloween or is it halloween fucking rules like it's just (laughs) halloween kills we can't Mm. we gotta figure this out Mm. (laughs) and will it be followed by halloween kills in space much like machete (laughs) (laughs) no it's no it's gonna be a halloween kills x which will take place in space interesting halloween x i l l s <laughs> halloween shills <laughs> no, it's halloween x kills x but kills with a z oh so he's like it's like green room mixed with halloween where it's just like a bunch of like straight edge kids no it's a 2008 modern warfare 2 lobby oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it is yeah, yeah. i like it i just want halloween kills to come out so i can fucking talk about it yeah i know uh, yeah you read the script uh, yes yes um which by the way thanks Melly. uh I heard a second trailer had come out and I immediately texted us. I was like, I need you to talk to Mally and ask if it's okay if I can watch this. <laughs> yeah, no, do not watch that trailer at all. Full of spoilies. Because a buddy of mine, buddy of mine, uh, Jason at work, uh, he, he absolutely, we've been talking, we've been so excited for this movie. Mm-hmm. And he's like, so a new trailer come out. And I was like, yeah. He's like, don't watch it. It's yeah. a little too much. I was yep. like, hold on one second. Because we thought the last one was too much. Right? And we were all like, nah, bro, that, that, that's, that's green. Like, go. <laughs> the first 20 minutes. Fucking watch yeah. it. Yeah, Mally, you talk told us that the trailer is basically the first 20 pages of the script more or less is that accurate or you said you said like the the trail the first trailer that dropped with michael and the firefighters and stuff like yeah. doesn't really spoil anything like it's just it's all within like the first like chunk of the script kind of okay, okay. interesting okay what if a small typo of mally it says do not watch the first trailer it's the first 20 pages of the script and we're all like hell yeah brother. <laughs> we're gonna watch this. and we just got spoiled the entire film no i will say i hated the title halloween kills mm. yeah until i read it and now oh, i kind of get it, it like justifies it kind of okay i still don't love it <laughs> but i i get it going back to your question no i don't love it but um i always took it as like in this town 
Halloween kills. If, if, okay. if that answers uh, your question. Like, like if it, you're going to die, it's going to be on Halloween. Synonymous with Halloween. Yeah. Which, you know, as the as the sheriff in this movie who acts like the mayor in Jaws, <laughs> yes, essentially, <laughs> is just like, what are we going to do? Cancel Halloween? Well, yeah, Halloween kills. My biggest issue with him is this movie takes place in Illinois. Why is he wearing a cowboy hat? I don't know, but I fucking rules. <laughs> don't, don't ask fucking questions, Mally. Why was all of oh. Rob Zombie's characters hillbillies? Because <laughs> it's Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this movie's got a lot of uh, Rob Zombie DNA in it. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, I didn't realize until this rewatch. I think that they picked the best stuff from those movies yes. yeah. to use for yeah. sure. When uh, Nathan brought up the dad, which was his name again, Nathan. I'm sorry, Toby, Toby Huss. Yeah. Yes, I, it made me think about how the family in this movie, like, or the family dynamic, as far as like mom, dad eating breakfast, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> and the reflection of the Rob Zombie one. Yeah, is <laughs> just so much wholesome. You mean where? The dad of that movie says, I will crawl over there and I will go <laughs> fuck the shit out of her. Yes, that. God damn it. The fact you have. Imagine Toby Huss saying that line. God. <laughs> no, imagine Judy Greer saying that. <laughs> in, retros- in retrospect, both breakfasts talk about penises. Wow. Yeah. Very good point. True. Yeah. But, but but the dick is in a different context. <laughs> We're already drawing fucking parallels, just like in Halloween 6. Yeah. What Star Wars movie is this one going to inspire? <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Ooh, I think I think this is the Rogue One. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, the CGI Peter Cushing at the end was pretty wild. Yeah. That means that means the CGI is going. Or, sorry, not the CGI, but the kill count is going to be fucking off the charts. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> all right. So Halloween 2018. Yeah. We've all seen this movie. I'm sure plenty of times before. Mm-hmm. Does anyone remember their their first time seeing it? The reaction, like how they felt about it? Yes, yes. I do. Do you want to go first, Mally? You seem very excited. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, first, it should be noted that this movie has this is one of like the five movies I own on mm-hmm. like Prime Video. Oh, okay. <laughs> this movie has been on a constant loop since around 6 p.m. last night nice. in my apartment. I, I've, it's just been heavy rotation. <laughs> and you think my buddy Josh is a serial killer? <laughs> <laughs> it, this was research, Nathan. He uh-huh. does that shit for fun. <laughs> That's true. But no, I remember being super psyched. I saw this opening night mm-hmm. here in Atlanta and just like walking out of theater just being like, that was fucking woo! Like, yeah. yeah, I get it. <laughs> fucking here for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I immediately went to my buddy's house, uh, actually former guest, John Hoffler, Johnny Utah, mm-hmm. and was like ranting and raving to him about it. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. I don't really like horror movies, but I just kept talking about it for like an hour and a half. <laughs> that's a good friend. Did not care that he didn't care. Yeah. yeah. I got super lucky because I remember right before it was coming out, someone on... um the Los Angeles subreddit mm-hmm. was like, hey, I've got tickets to the screening of this movie. Um, it's some new Halloween movie. I can't go. Does anybody want them? Some new Halloween movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I was like, "Uh, yes, please. <laughs> Who's this motherfucker? It's one of them. That boy need to show some respect. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I would fucking love that. Yeah. And uh, he's like, all right, uh, just go there. Tell him your name and show him this email. And I was super sketched out because I'm like, what if this isn't real? Yeah. And I get there and I'm just an asshole. <laughs> yeah, that does that just sounds so shady. Yes, yeah. right? But I get there and it's fucking legit. I'm sitting in the theater. Mm-hmm. The movie starts and man, it was... And you're just rock hard the whole time. Yes. You're down Mally's Alley. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I very rarely t- like seeing horror movies in the theater because I feel like the crowds ruin them. Yeah. Like seeing Candyman recently, I was just so annoyed by the couple behind me. I had a bad audience in, in Candyman too. And yeah. I was I was really bummed out by it because I, I don't know. I was super into that movie. It's, it's when people are pointing out the obvious and whispering to their partners. It's like, yeah, we're all it's a giant screen. We're all seeing the same thing. Yeah. I don't need your commentary. I told you about when I saw uh, Infinity War and the guy behind me leans over to his girlfriend and goes, that's Tony Stark. He's an- he's uh, he's Iron Man in these movies. <laughs> oh, God. In these movies. <laughs> it would have been better if he said he's Ant-Man in these movies. Like he's just giving his girlfriend the correct information the whole time. Or if they were just he was just like, well, the wells run dry. <laughs> <laughs> and that was also the first date. Too. Yeah. So like he's given him given her all the wrong information. That's Thanos. He's one of the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> like his philosophy about it is pretty solid, right? Yeah. He's yeah. got some points. Yo, that's Captain America. He's French. Perfect ass. <laughs> you should put your hand in this popcorn bucket. <laughs> but 
<laughs> when I was when I was getting at there was I usually hate seeing horror movies with yes. with crowds because I feel like they're ruining it. But sure. this crowd was great. Everyone was super fucking into the movie. And a scene I know we're gonna talk about later, but for a brief moment, Michael contemplates killing a infant. Yes. Oh yeah. I felt the entire audience's assholes clenched. Yes, me too. <laughs> yeah, maybe yes. this movie's biggest flaw, honestly. <laughs> that he doesn't? <laughs> that he doesn't do it. <laughs> All right, but let's, let's be honest. Look, my man Michael was playing the long game. Yeah, he's waiting until that baby's 17. <laughs> he's coming, no, no, no. He's coming no, back no, no, for that no, no, baby. No, 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 no. He just killed the single mother. Mm -hmm. There's no telling when that body's going to be found. Oh, <laughs> okay, that baby can't okay. even... He can't feed him, take care of himself. Okay. Yeah, that he killed that baby. Mally's on board for a baby starving. <laughs> yes. Let's just throw that up on the board. But honest to God, that's what I thought seeing the movie. Like, when the movie ended... I was like, yeah, it's a great movie. That fucking baby is going to die. <laughs> Someone go check on that baby. Yeah. yeah. Whose baby this? There's a couple of people like that in this movie where I'm just like, man, what is their life? Like, like Julian fucking takes off into the night. Yeah. <laughs> He's still out there. Yeah. He's coming back for a uh, Halloween. Uh, I'm trying to think of a really shitty title. <laughs> Halloween Kills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to come back It was for right there. <laughs> it was right there on the tip of my tongue. Well, and what's interesting, too, is it looks like this sequel is bringing back a lot of people that you thought were just, like, loose ends and loose yeah. threads. Like, Lindsay Wallace and Tommy Doyle. Okay, I think we should talk, we should, sh we should talk about this movie because I have yeah. questions about that but i want to talk about this movie Let's, we'll talk about halloween kills at the end sure. yes okay that's fair and then i want because there's some there's some questions i want to ask mally because i'm like <laughs> eh. but let's talk about this movie first oh we're gonna we're gonna watch the trailer for the first trailer again for halloween kills at the end of this because we gotta we gotta get like some kind of uh some post-mortem some closure on some things yeah. so. so did all the characters in this movie <laughs> but <laughs> Um, so JT, you're a big Halloween fan. I think probably the biggest amongst all of us. Yes, sir. What was your first reaction to Halloween Kills? Or I guess Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to do that so much. Um, no, I uh, saw it opening night. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, fun fact. Uh, I mean, you know this. Dustin knows how big of a fan I am. We, mm -hmm. I saw it and he's like, call me immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you watch a movie and you realize there's some things that you're like... That was kind of shit, wasn't it? Like, but because you're so like hyped on it, you're like, that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. and this is the sequel I've always wanted. Yeah. Okay. This is something that I, I wanted a good sequel because as a Halloween fan, yeah. we don't have a good track record of. Isn't that the weirdest thing? Like, this is my favorite slasher series of like the big, the big tentpole slasher series. Yeah. And it's, but it still is like wildly inconsistent. And I'm still yeah. just like. I'm still just like, I'll put on Halloween 5 because of, you know, Donald Pleasance's insane performance. Yeah, like you look at it, the acting prowess of which of Donald Pleasance. Let's be yeah. uh, like, uh, here's my opinion on it. Uh, like, I wish this was the movie that Donald Pleasance got to see. Yeah. Sure. Oh, he would have ate this script up. I oh, think. my God. Yes. Um, Like I said, when you look at Friday the 13th, you look at Nightmare on Elm Street. No, their shit's not nothing to write home about. But they're <laughs> self, <laughs> they're self-aware. They're medic humor horror comedy sometimes yeah and then <laughs> and then you got the halloween which is trying to be serious because it is serious subject matter all yeah. this other stuff and it falls flat on its face it's just but it's like a bloody soap opera which is kind of like the fun of the halloween movies is it's like they keep trying to build on what came before even if it doesn't work yeah yep. i mean i will say for definitively i think as of today before halloween kills comes out mm -hmm. i think three of these movies are legitimately great movies mm -hmm. and i think it's this one the original and the original two i agree i think are like not even joking like i think they're great movies yeah absolutely phenomenal films dustin you and i have disagreed on this before but it is on record that i do not like halloween 2 that much yeah that's, that's fine but you like rob zombies halloween 2 the director's cut. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I like it. <laughs> you think it's a better movie? I like that it swings for the fences yeah. and is like it is an auteur's take on Halloween for sure, for yeah, better like or worse. It tries to do its own thing. Whether and it, I'm not saying it what it does is good, but I respect it for trying to do something. No, I don't. It's no. <laughs> the director's cut, at least. The theatrical is garbage. I think the first like 30 minutes of Rob Zombie's Halloween Two is amazing oh the dream sequence yeah <laughs> the dream sequence <laughs> i respect i respect both of y'all but you're wrong <laughs> you didn't like the hospital stuff in rob zombies halloween 2 <laughs> yeah sure i guess if 
Octavia. <laughs> okay. Octavia, she was the best part. Let's be honest. Like, uh, uh, yeah. She yeah. goes into that room that's full of bodies. You know that every <laughs> hospital just dumps bodies down a chute. Yeah. Yeah. Like when once they die of like old age or you've never been to a country morgue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but J- JT, so thoughts after you saw the movie um yeah no yeah sorry we were sidetracked uh yeah no when you watch a movie like that and i'm so excited of course like i finally got a sequel or a that's uh, at this point i know it's going to be into a trilogy i'm extremely excited about it mm-hmm. and then as the hype dies down there's a couple of things that we'll talk get into later that i'm just like oh i really don't like this part like mm-hmm. i watch yeah. it now and i'm so excited and then this whole plot line gets <laughs> oh and i'm just like all right let's just skip. there's one plot more specifically not plot line but there's one character that you could just l- like leave out it totally? would be great if you could just lose them from this I fucking think movie. i know who you're talking about i think yeah. there's a couple yeah. yeah one character one plot line and we'll We'll talk about that in a moment, but like you just you take the biggest scamp out of this movie and it gets infinitely better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, so it sounds like we all generally like the movie. We have some minor qualms with it, but so fuck Nathan stops. Huh? <laughs> Did I not get you, Nathan? I'm nope. sorry. That's okay. I so it's funny. Right, so moving on. <laughs> so I uh I I kind of uh shocked Dustin a little bit off mic last week when I mentioned that um, I was really looking forward to uh, I picked this movie. I was really looking forward to talking about it because uh, it is one that I have mixed feelings on. Mm-hmm. And I think that I need to clarify that you're a very nice guy. <laughs> I'm a very nice guy. I'm not a fucking incel. Um, I no. I I have I have a lot of emotions tied up in this movie, which will lead into um Mally's favorite thing that i do it's time for one of nathan's sad stories oh boy son of a bit i'll go quick Wait, there's a there's a sound clip for this right hold on <laughs> all right now please start meanwhile in nathan's tortured psyche um, <laughs> can we do the law and order sound effects and some were just randomly in the middle of this not right now <laughs> okay. save it for a good part right. right yeah all right so this movie comes out october 19th 2018 mm-hmm. Uh, it was the movie I was looking forward to more than any other that year. Mm-hmm. I was annoyed that it has the title Halloween. Yep. <laughs> I I get I don't like that from these like legacy sequels. I thought it was dumb when the thing did it. I think it's dumb that Scream is doing it. Yep. Yeah, but and I you know uh, Candyman is the only one that I feel like kind of justifies it uh, in a weird way. Oh, the fucking thing. This, wait, what did you say? <laughs> no, just thinking about the thing. Oh, the like, thing. Want, it's funny. The two movies I have on my table, my coffee table next to the biscuit. <laughs> 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 a joke for nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot because that was it. But is <laughs> is the twenty eighteen? Yeah, the prequel to the remake that has the same title as the remake. <laughs> no, but it's it's Halloween to twenty eighteen, and the thing because i just bought my brother the steel book he gave me uh-huh. a blu-ray copy and i watched them both back to back <laughs> oh hell yeah nice yeah and i thought i was thinking during watching this i'm sorry i'm ranting but i was no, thinking about the remake and i was like why do they call that the fucking thing like yeah. i don't understand it's so wild they should have just like gone with duh thing Ooh. yeah <laughs> or another thing or Ooh. here's the i was thing. just gonna say another thing <laughs> or the, or playing aliens like and be like Ooh. the things Ooh, wait a minute. things first things first damn it i was about to say <laughs> that. that's <laughs> really good damn it that's really good oh my god that's the first time i've ever gotten a cheer on this show you got another thing coming that's the sequel you got another thing coming that's so good that's so good jt oh first things first you got another thing coming oh what a great duo oh boy howdy that was good okay anyways nathan how was your what was your opinion on halloween oh yeah your sad story hold on <laughs> back to the hall of justice the um so this movie comes out october 19th 2018 mm-hmm. on october 18th 28 or sorry october uh 10th 2018 mm-hmm. Panama City is hit by a Category 5 hurricane. I fucking knew it. Son of a bitch. (laughs) Wrecks my home. My partner at the time and I move in with my parents. I lose my job. Things are bleak. And all I want to do as soon as the fucking power comes back on the beach is go see Halloween. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is for me, damn it. (laughs) Um, And so I, even though I had lost my job, I was like freaking out about what to do. I was like, guys, please come see this with me. I like paid for my parents and my my partner to go see Halloween with me. And I 
from the moment that it starts, I'm in. Mm -hmm. And when the credits roll, it's so weird. It took me a while to revisit it. Like I left the theater thinking that was fine. Mm. You know, I was like that. That was it was a worthy sequel. The acting's great. It's they. It's the best looking Halloween movie. Oh, like, absolutely. Um, like I this the yeah, it's gorgeous. Michael Simmons cinematography, incredible. Um, no relation. <laughs> like, yeah. And I said, I, I, I uh, over the years, it, or I guess it's only been a couple of years, but every time I watch this movie, I like it more. Yeah. Mm. Um, to the point where I'm right there with you. This is top three of the series easily, oh, yeah. maybe the second best movie in the series. But mm -hmm. I, I still have issues with it, but they don't feel as dire as they did when I went to this movie expecting it to solve all my problems. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I I don't know, having some space from that period of time and going back and looking at it on its own terms, not as the movie that I wanted it to be, but the like great sequel and story about trauma and survivors that it is mm -hmm. i i genuinely love this movie i think it has the best score of the series oh my god mm -hmm. i want to talk about i wanted to bring that up later but jesus it's like it's so good yeah. um and uh i am I, i'm impossibly i mean i'm impossibly excited for halloween kills um i can't wait to see what that movie is and how much it pushes the envelope but yeah it's it's weird i think Sometimes you can have a, a tainted opinion of a movie depending on like where you're at in your head when you see it. Honestly, I thought this story was going to be like, yeah, and you know, the movie was, you know, pretty good. I enjoyed it and then got home and my dog died. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was a couple months after I saw Fucking the movie. Fucking Jesus. <laughs> It was a bad year for me, dog. <laughs> just a lot of other people died. Yeah, the Mally, but it, it's it's okay. I mean, Nathan, just to tie this in, I think it's almost kind of cathartic that Halloween was like your therapy, almost like your saving grace. It, it was. Oh, yeah, that's depressing. It was hard to like step away from that for a long time. Yeah, and now I I view it as like it's almost I don't know the, the fact that this was what I set out to do. Like this was how I dealt with it. Was my favorite horror series is back baby mm -hmm. and this is gonna like you know it, it was it was a salve in a lot of ways but i was also just like you know i was primed for disappointment yeah <laughs> at this point like yeah absolutely well when you have like i guess an expectation of like okay this is my end goal is to be able to watch this movie there's a lot of high expectations for that movie oh yeah i put a lot i put a lot of responsibility on this movie <laughs> David Gordon Green, you better get your fucking days numbered. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is that you that you had all this tragedy happen and that this movie was like your saving grace almost. Mm -hmm. And then just the, the meta-ness of, well, for Lori, the character, she's been avoiding this yeah. for 40 years. And then she deals with it and it's cathartic for her. There is there is kind of a nice little symmetry there. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel you. Yeah, I went in thinking... I really hope this is good. Mm -hmm. And for me, I started off loving it. I mean, yes, I, I can see the issues, but for me, it's never waning in quality. It's only gotten better for me. But yeah. Yeah. I again, I don't have blinders on to those. I've had I've had almost the opposite journey of JT mm -hmm. where like each time I find new things that I love about it, mm -hmm. even even the plot line that I think is shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. There is a moment in, wrapped up in it that I love. See, I agree with you. So like as a the things I don't like about it as I watch it, there's a cap. Okay, mm -hmm. there's only like two or three things and I'm like, fuck, that's no. But <laughs> I, I understand from a filmmaking point of view that it it's for a reason. Okay, like let, let, some let's, of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, some of it. Yeah, like the Can we all just agree like just cuz it sounds like we're all talking around it and yep. I'm hoping we're all in the same. It's the teenage kids plot, right? No. Oh, no, it's no? The, it's Dr. Sartain for me. Oh, yes. the problem. Oh, yes. Sorry. Sartain. I, Dr. Sartain. Yes, obviously okay. the weaker point. It's definitely Dr. Sartain, but the teenagers kind of yeah, that shit was essentially a plot to be like Oh, she doesn't have her phone. That's all. That yeah. yeah, it does go nowhere. And I think that is a cert that is a uh, consequence of wasn't there an interview with Danny McBride where he's like, yeah, we wrote like 50 versions yes. of this fucker. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, so it's like this is like a synthesis. I mean, there's three screenwriters credited on this and they went through so many drafts, including one that was supposed to tee up a sequel that was shot back to back with this one. So yeah. I, I do think that 
that's why we have certain things that don't add up. But I will say when you have so many like mixed feelings about it, you got some fans that say like, well, it's it's because of this reason. You got some fans just like, no, this is shit. <laughs> to <laughs> right. me, that shows on how many plot lines they threw in the trash to get something that might be so indecisive that like, yeah. right. you know what, this fucking works. Let's just fucking do it. Okay. Yeah. And I will say, Nathan, you mentioned how there's three screenwriters just to note it like it wasn't like a guy wrote it a second guy came in and rewrote it a third guy came in or like they did work on it all together oh yeah no they were like hashing out the story together it was a like a brain trust and yeah. i yeah. feel like that just showed that much effort put into this really makes me appreciate the movie yeah agreed one of the things that i love i i listened to that that how i i know we got to get to the fucking trailer but like <laughs> you it's only 40 minutes <laughs> you guys told me about the uh halloween unmasked podcast yes and i really enjoyed this interview with danny mcbride where he was talking about things that stayed in every draft of the script mm -hmm. and the highlight was the stage direction his brains shit out yeah <laughs> <laughs> which i just find delightful yeah i mean it's cool i went and told about the podcast i was just told to <laughs> sh fucking show up i was thinking i was like i need more shit to watch because the blu-ray i have don't have a commentary or anything like that no so I, it just which i think is a missed opportunity for agreed. sure it just like I, I had to buy the 4k version of it like a, yeah like a fucking pled well, the, <laughs> and i was like well, maybe i could find it on the internet somewhere no can't find it the what yeah what that kind of shocked me was the blu-ray has like behind the scenes featurettes and they're like four minutes long <laughs> each four minutes and long. it's and it's literally the most obvious shit like it cuts to danny mcbride being like we we wanted to do a sequel to the original and i was like yeah no i know i saw the fucking movie like <laughs> we kill people <laughs> anyway uh and my character if you look real close my character from your highness is in it <laughs> be amazing all right guys well we're deep in this episode already we haven't even talked about it so without further ado what movie is this oh yeah uh <laughs> let's talk about halloween And I'm just going to let you guess which year we're talking about. Hello, Green. <laughs> <laughs> the happening. You know, that says a lot about society. <laughs> so Halloween, parentheses, 2018. There you go. Comes out in the year 2018, of course. Directed no shit. <laughs> <laughs> let him speak. Directed by uh, David Gordon Green, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, Andy Matich Matichak. I think it's how you pronounce her name. I knew you were going to fuck that up. Of course. Uh, Will Patton, Virginia Gardner, Nick Castle, Miles Robbins, Toby Huss, and Jefferson Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, had a very modest budget, only $10 million, but managed to gross $256 million worldwide. Hell yes. And currently sits at a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which I think is fair. Yeah, no, that's a, that's, it earns that 79. That's pretty respectable. Yeah. I might put it in the low to mid 80s. Mm. I'd give it an 81. I might go 84. Oh, like Halloween 2. Fuck. <laughs> I love this movie, guys. <laughs> no, it, I very much enjoy this movie. No, it rules. I, I really, I thoroughly enjoy it. Well, let's uh, enjoy it some more by watching the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Great segue. Oh, man, I haven't seen this trailer, God, maybe since before the movie came out. Yeah, yeah. You know, by the time, like, how this is going, we could probably just watch the entire movie together, yeah. guys. We're only 43 <laughs> minutes in. I mean, cue that bitch up. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Testing one, two, three. Yeah. We're on. There's a button called Smoke Purge, and I'm so <laughs> curious as to what it is. They should have had that shit in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> he was shot by his own psychiatrist and taken into custody that night. And spent the last 40 years in captivity. Man. I'm here to play four square. Oh, Bro, I haven't even heard of that game <laughs> in I years. Like I couldn't tell you how to play it. I thought about wall ball the other day. Do you remember wall ball? Yeah. <laughs> Michael plays wall ball with Lori at one point in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk about a trope that doesn't like call me Ever insensitive here? Mm. Why are insane asylum movies yeah, I mean, like in movies are always it really shows like the oh the uh, pink chip eaters like it <laughs> it just Christ. goes full <laughs> insane yeah this no, this, this movie has a have. relationship with the mentally <laughs> ill that the original has that I think is problematic at yeah. best yeah like you see this and then like you see like you know cuckoo's nest and so girl interrupt and you're like something's not right well it's like there's a moment in the original movie where like 
Marion Chambers says, like, I didn't know they let them walk around like this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? They're like, they're fucking people. Like, relax. <laughs> yeah. Michael escaped. Let's finish this uh, before I keep talking. Or Dustin's gonna yell at me. Yeah, y'all shut the fuck up. I'm trying to watch this trailer. <laughs> I, I know you're trying to hear the movie. Yeah, he's trying to hear Dana taking a dump in the trailer. <laughs> I need to take a two almost immediately. Well, the way that cut was, it looked like Michael just headbutted the yep. bathroom door. Yep, I thought that the entire yeah. like build up to this movie, I thought Michael was headbutting this shit so hard he was bleeding. <laughs> and I was so fucking for it. You hear me? Like I was like, hell yeah. Do you guys remember the, the the one extended clip that they put out before this movie dropped was the oneer leading up to him going into the house? Yeah. Yep. yep. Which I was just like, fuck, yep. this movie's gonna be everything. It's incredible. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Because I that that's absolutely phenomenal. I'm Ooh. so excited for that shot. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this was before they reshot. They changed the ending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Close the closet door. For the good, I think. I think this ending rules. I, think, I agree. I feel like this shot. I feel like this shot should have not been in the trailer. Of him in the in the closet. That shit would have scared the fuck out of me in the trailer. No, I agree. Yeah. The original ending was not very good. Well, the original opening, they were gonna change. They were gonna full on change the ending of the first movie. Michael was. They were gonna hire a. Uh, they were gonna cast a Loomis to get murdered by Michael before he even shoots him out the window. Oh, that's right. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't either. There's a famous line that says, I shot him six times. Like, that's... <laughs> everybody knows that. Yeah, but that's in the sequel. That's how the movie... That's the funny thing about Halloween is, like, when you rewatch the first one, Loomis's performance is super measured, yep. and then he starts Halloween 2 screaming, like, Call the sheriff! Death has come to your town! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fucking cocaine and Mountain Doom, my guy. Like, that's like... <laughs> well, I was gonna say, to be fair... <laughs> From Loomis's point of view, yeah. shit is crazy by that point. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's just murdered a guy who then left. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's understandable. We've all been there. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the movie, but like, okay, so from when the cut from the first movie where it showed him on the, like, Loomis looks over the balcony, there's no one there. Yeah. The music score goes in gold, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then this intro to the second H2 plays, and then the same, it plays the same shit, alright? And then it shows some, it shows the most god-awful silhouette of a guy on the ground for some reason, like that <laughs> yeah. made a perfect silhouette stick figure yeah. yes. on the grass. It's so funny. I always thought, even from a kid, I was all like, what the fuck? It's <laughs> like, a tall grass, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I will say, because the, the story has to happen. If you want this to follow directly from Halloween. I don't need to know where he landed. But <laughs> I don't I don't need to No, no, no. I'm saying for for Halloween 2018, I think the one issue I have with where this movie starts. We don't see him get captured? No, not even that. I think the brilliance of the ending of Halloween, if you take it as a singular perfect ending, mm -hmm. like with no sequels involved, mm -hmm. You have the the heavy breathing, the shot of the the shots of the town and the different you know areas that he's attacked. Yeah, and you know the ending just says he's still out there. Yeah, no one can stop him. You know, death has come to this town. It's a perfectly John Carpenter nihilist ending. Yeah, okay, it would be perfect for our show. Yes, <laughs> and then this movie asks us to believe he just fucking stumbled down the street. Yeah, <laughs> and someone arrested him. Yeah, right. on, on, <laughs> on behalf of uh. Silver Linings this podcast. Thank you, John Carpenter, for yeah. what you do. So he's just like, what he's like, you know, I'm just picturing Michael, you know, kind of like, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Like, just kind of like <laughs> trying to hold his guts in. Did he put his hands up? Like, did he cooperate? Is what I want to like. Yeah, I guess I would have would have been better if they would have like from like shoulders down showed flashbacks of like them apprehending Michael or something, you know, Loomis cornering him or yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that would have worked because I, I mean, we know <laughs> if it's any energy from like H2, Loomis would have fucking pissed on him. <laughs> <laughs> like if we're going <laughs> As he's in handcuffs, like Loomis would have. It's time, Michael. <laughs> Zip. Zip. <laughs> Soak it up. All right, guys. Well, before we start, let's talk about Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking ready. Okay. We're talking about the, like, the holiday, or? <laughs> uh, my first note was, oh, no, I forgot this movie was made by Miramax. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of a 
downer. <laughs> sure. Miramax sounds like a makeup company. I mean, when like most of the Halloween sequels were as well. Yeah, yeah Dimension. No. Yeah. Yeah, but I just I I thought we were past all that. Almost. <laughs> no, nope. we're almost there. <laughs> I thought I thought we've grown up yeah. a little bit. Actually, I think the next one is technically uh produced by Miramax, but yeah. you know, everything's changed hands since then, which is nice. Right. Yeah. yeah, my my first note is that uh these podcasters are so far up their own fucking asses. Yes. <laughs> are we that bad? No, no, no. Yes. No. no. I, great. <laughs> No, we know where to record. We're not recording in like the car? in a loud room yeah. or in a, while driving like a bunch of assholes. The, the male podcaster for me is the worst because Agreed. he's just like, could evil have come to this town? And I'm just like, dude, you were, yeah, you were so far up your own fucking ass. Journalists don't pay for interviews. Ugh. The fuck they don't? <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty fu It's pretty wild that they like crouch down by Judith Myers' grave and she goes, as she sat there brushing her yeah. hair. Yeah. How did they get his mask? Someone from the attorney general's office? He's got a friend in the DA, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can just check those out to oh. random people. Interesting. Well, you obviously don't have a friend in the DA's office. I, guess not. <laughs> I want I want to see how this uh I want to see how this killer reacts to it. It'll be great for my show. <laughs> yeah. It'll be great. Yeah. But okay, so another thing about that scene like uh with the Judith Myers shit. Yeah. The the grave uh the or sorry the um, the groundskeeper the groundskeeper looks over and sees some strange man leaning over a tree and yeah. if she just if she just simply been like, "Yo, who the fuck is that?" Right. Yeah. They would have looked over and been like shit that's michael myers well i don't know man his face was obscured by a tree branch yeah, <laughs> yeah man oh yeah you're wearing white scrubs you're you know what it could be anybody <laughs> it could be anybody <laughs> oh look an angel <laughs> they're told by dr sartain like don't cross the line mm -hmm. uh you know he's not gonna talk to anybody and also tie your shoes tie your shoes tie your shoelaces he walks up to he walks up onto the line starts screaming at michael and waving his mask and i'm like mm -hmm. is this like mtv boiling points yeah. but for like <laughs> is this allowed <laughs> <laughs> like an asylum like this is it's journalism Nathan yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're right we're investigative journalists yeah um I do love the touch that Michael has the scar on his neck yeah uh, from the the knitting needle uh, and he has and the, the, the eye. eye yeah from the coat anger yeah yes 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 which yes. shout out because was he even credited in your little cast list James Jude Courtney Dustin no uh, uh, Roger Ebert's website does not list him as a that's fucked up he's they list Nick Castle but well you're a piece of shit Dustin yeah yeah, yeah I'm I'm the piece of shit right JJC <laughs> is great great in this yes he I is. agree i think he's really good he's got the kind of you know he he reminds me of uh of dick warlock in halloween 2 mm. yes the greatest name of all time yep. yeah and he was also in halloween 3 as an android dude yeah. as yeah. one of the androids yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> i really like him a lot he's got that kind of robotic uh movements and in the you know, there's moments where they they kind of remind you that Michael's like in his 60s now. Yeah. Like he's he's not 61. in 61. Yeah. yeah, he's Michael Myers was 61. Mm -hmm. He's no spring chicken, if you would. He's not in shape. <laughs> like he's not. He's no lip biscuit, if you would. <laughs> <laughs> he's not fat, but he's also like he's got like a little bit of a pooch. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's something about this Michael Myers, much like uh, Nick Cage and Mandy, where I'm just like, I could play this one. <laughs> I got this. I got this. I got this. Speaking about his like his robotic movements and stuff, I think the part that really encapsulates how much I enjoy this version of Michael, if you will, like how much it plays off the original is mm -hmm. when he's fighting Lori in the in the bedroom with all the mannequins at the end. Yes. And he he gets kind of that old school universal monster like the way he grips her arms out yes. and like yeah yeah he like he like goes for the eyes like to try and gouge her eyes out and stuff he also frenzies like he he moves a little faster than normal like yeah. he's like uh and we'll get to this but the 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 single best thing about this movie to me is that it the third act plays out as a slasher movie where Michael is the final girl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And I fucking it is my uh, it's so good. Honestly, it is my f uh one since I didn't get all the cool like podcast and shit from <laughs> Dustin, but one little fact I do know, the scene with the when quote unquote Lori and Michael become face to face with each other Right, upstairs bedroom michael's looking oh yeah the window the, in the window mirror. which is a mirror mm -hmm. uh behind the scenes uh 
Well, sorry. Okay, so it shows the shot, and then it cuts to Lori looking up. Mm -hmm. And then he tilts his head. And then he tilts his head. That is actually Nick Castle. And then it cuts, quickly takes off the mask, and gives it to Courtney. Yeah. And that was kind of like a ceremonial passing. Oh, like off Oh, that's cool. Passing of the torch, like here, like this is yours now. Which I thought was amazing. Nick Castle, from everything I've seen, Nick Castle is just a fantastic guy who worked for like, on the original, worked for like, 50 bucks a day and then mm-hmm. coke and pepsi like yeah. it was fantastic and fucking directed the last starfighter yeah true and i think nick is co-reprising and kills as well if memory serves oh sweet yeah it's, i guess we should explain for those who who may not know nick castle was the original michael myers in the 1978 yes. version yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And he plays the unmasked version of michael mm-hmm. in this one so anytime you see michael without his mask no, no he doesn't no he no, doesn't so I have that backwards yeah no that's yeah it's james jude courtney oh, i'm sorry my mistake so he's got i got it backwards yeah but he's fantastic he hasn't lost his edge at all wait nick like nick castle he only plays michael in this movie in like a couple shots yes and it's with the mask on yeah and and he's the breathing sounds i believe yeah, yeah he's the breathing sounds and then he's the the mirror shot but that's that's about it yeah really okay i thought it was more than that no it's mostly jjc okay well he does a great tribute to him yeah he was on set for the entire shooting pretty much like he was very much involved, which I thought was amazing. Mm-hmm. Is this the oldest slasher of any horror movie? Uh, don't breathe. Well, how old is he in Don't Breathe? Uh, however old Stephen Lang is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would you really call that a slasher, though? I I don't know. Maybe it's it's not a slasher. It's a that's a base that's a baster movie. Yeah, it's, it's a, a it's, it's an inseminator. <laughs> yeah, if you would, it's a baster movie. <laughs> Ugh, that movie's fucking disgusting. <laughs> the movie was. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. That movie was fantastic up until that point. That reveal. It's good. It's a good movie, but yeah, this new one. T- this new one seems like they're trying to make him the hero. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He, he has a little girl, and you're kind of wondering, like, Yo, bro, how'd you get that? Man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was some bastering involved. (laughs) Anyway. Speaking of child protective services, can we talk about the kids in this movie? Like the younger kids. Hang on. (laughs) Let's not jump all the way there first. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. Do you think the three of us, and I'm going to include JT. Yeah. Do you think we would have gone out as quickly and easily as the two podcasters in this film? Quicker. Yep. So much faster. The, The girl had... All the time in the world to get out. Yes. When the dude is getting murdered and she just sits there. The guy had all the time in the world to turn around and let her fucking die. Yeah. And just run. Yeah. Let's be honest here. Okay. That's JT's opinion. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I the, like the, the, this. What's his name? The the guy, the male podcaster. Uh, uh, no one. No one cares. No one cares. Aaron. Aaron. His whole like his whole MO is to neg people. Yep. He <laughs> screams at Michael. Yep. He like. Make, he basically starts mocking Lori yep. the second he sees her. And I would I would completely say throw his character in the trash if it wasn't for the fact that that scream of say something and the smash to the credits isn't the fucking oh, dopest thing I've ever seen. So fucking good. God damn, you're fucking right. That's the best things he's done in his... No offense to the actor. I'm sure he's done great things, <laughs> but that's the best thing he's done. Piggybacking off of last week's episode, we were talking about smash cuts to titles, yeah? Yeah. No, I love it. Yeah, I... I I said holy shit out loud in the theater when like, yeah. when it when that happened. I like the pumpkin reassembly. Yeah, yeah it's oh, great. I was about to say the the reverse the inflating pumpkin that was fantastic. It's reinflating life back into this franchise. I it felt love great. it. Aww. And if it wasn't, look, I'm not gonna lie for the female podcaster. You can put her name in here, like insert name here. But Dana was it Dana? <laughs> yeah, Dana. Right. It, yeah, it was Dana. Dana and Aaron. I loved. Dana, <laughs> up until Stop she talked about it like that. <laughs> Dana, up Dana, in, up until <laughs> up until she talked about Lori getting her daughter taken away from her and being like, "When'd you get custody back?" Yeah, I I didn't, you dumb bitch. But you knew that. But right. like, which I I kind of liked her. Like yeah. she was like, "I'm willing to you know pay for this." You know, she wasn't. And then if you look at some of the deleted scenes, like you can, it fleshes out the relationship between the two of them. Like, mm-hmm. actually, it's really fucking weird. We'll talk about that in a moment. But there's a weird shower scene. Yeah. Which I saw in the trailer, which I was like, oh, that's going to be terrifying. 
and come to find out it was just oh, of her in the shower yeah. <laughs> yeah and aaron fucking around with the mask and i was like that's fucking weird like he killed people in that mask and you're wearing it there's characters in this movie whose sole purpose is to basically help with the alley-oop for michael because yes. like they give him his mask yeah and then what what's his name um sartain lets him loose off the bus yeah yeah in theory he's the one who kills the driver like yeah. that's that's what that's what i always assumed that's that's a fan theory that like um oh god uh take your time sweetie <laughs> David, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> David Gordon Green all but like denied. Like he just didn't. Oh, decide. interesting. Okay. Yeah, we're going to let fans like kind of come up with this. I mean, it could have been, you know, Michael Breakout. Who cares? Panama. Who gives a fuck? The bus wrecks. Who cares? Right, the bus wrecks. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's just Sartain's craziness towards the whole like <sighs> uh, Hawkins thing. Yeah. Where, like, eh, he could have done it. Yeah, do we talk about Sartain now or do we wait? Let's do it. Okay. Might as fucking well. All right. Let's go ahead. We're, we've opened this book. <laughs> Scam. <laughs> He's the biggest piece of shit in this entire film i think the performance is interesting yeah, i like i think he's great no <laughs> sit down colonel sanders he's not like the, the, he's not needed in this film at all there's a way because he only exists to get michael to Lori. yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I i get you and that's exactly what like i'm just like i get why they did this yeah. and you know i understand it i don't know how else they would have done it <laughs> that's why i'm not a screenwriter oh i do My, he like the cop hits michael with the car he goes to check on him michael gets up stabs him takes the car done what if michael just pulled up to her house because he drives yeah can we t <laughs> can we have a moment of silence for hawking so no yeah <laughs> All right. Well, the moment's over. <laughs> and that was it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. The, the thing about the Sartain is even things relating to him annoy me. I yeah. think you're the new Loomis might be the worst line in the movie. I like that line. I did, too. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was funny. I don't know what it is about it. I like that line. That's the only thing that I kind of like. It feel to me. It feels like it feels like shorthand for the audience. It, but it's it's Laurie just being like, I'm so fucking done with this. Oh, you're the new Loomis. Okay. Oh, see, I like that. I didn't. That's not how I. Well, and it's just so meta. Mm. I like that. To me, when I looked at it, it's it was to me like you're so insignificant. Yes. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. Laurie doesn't even like learn his name. I will keep that in mind the next time I watch it because i already want to rewatch this movie <laughs> well how did you take it nathan oh i just always i thought i've always just like kind of rolled my eyes as it being like shorthand for the audience oh, like as okay. though the, you know what i mean i think that is an intentional thing i think it's both yeah like, It'd be like if she walked up to the sheriff and she's like oh you're the new meeker yeah you know? <laughs> like or you're the you're you're the new bracket yeah. i think it's both like it's showing that lori's like just she doesn't give a shit she's like oh yeah great there's another fucking doctor yeah but it's also a wink <laughs> and nod to the audience right yeah but there's that weird moment at the end of the movie when she turns right to the camera and says this is the new halloween 1978 <laughs> dude she might as well have done that when she's in the shadows and she says happy halloween michael i, fucking, <laughs> I love every i love everything in that in yeah there. that's that that's amazing <laughs> see i think that's the worst part of the movie i'm like because uh, yeah. you just had the brilliance of judy greer faking not being able to to live up to her mom gotcha uh, let's hang on let's not let's not get there yet because i want to talk about that but not yet yeah yeah okay all right yeah no they, i i have a whole segment on that i want to talk about that i actually want to ask mally about with this new sequel like, okay oh, God. We'll, let, we'll get to that we'll get to that let's talk about the uh the new group of teenagers sure i think this male friend is just young gerard way <laughs> okay. oh wait the uh, julian or is that his name did you say julie <laughs> Wait, isn't like the Julian's a young Gerard way? Wait, isn't isn't there a character named Julian in this fucking Julian's movie? Julian's the little that's kid, the little kid that's, that's, that's the, being babysat. The little kid with the nastiest toenails. The nastiest toenails. Yeah. Miles Robbins, the one who plays Dave. Dave. Oh, Dave. Vicky, okay. Vicky's boyfriend. Yeah. He's um he was on the X Files. <laughs> Gerard Way's got some nasty ass toenails. We could all, we all know that. Do, have you seen him lately? I guarantee he fucking does. <laughs> Yo, fucking no one better talk shit about Gerard Way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he has come a complete turnaround from addiction. Happy boy. He is happy now. Love you leave him. him alone, okay? Oh, no. I mean, I love, like, Umbrella Academy's great. I, I just hope he finishes it. No, I, 
I'm just saying, he's got some nasty ass toenails. <laughs> no, no, shut your mouth. I'm gonna shame you now. No, I'm but it's he cool. Can, he can be a nice, great guy, like you know, who beat drug addiction yes. and still have nasty ass toenails yeah. and still have nasty ass toenails. You know who knows? Yeah, I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't shower. We've come, we've come to this point, right? <laughs> so. And he looks gorgeous. Yeah. Go back, go back a couple episodes and just listen to me and <laughs> Dustin talk about how much we love Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> yeah, I, I love. Love Andy Matichek uh, as as Allison. I think she's so good. Oh, she's great. I think Virginia Gardner's great. Virginia Gardner, I like a lot. Yeah. I, I I mostly know her from uh, Runaways mm-hmm. on on Hulu, but she's yeah, she's really good in this. Real quick, uh, Nathan, what's the name again? Uh, Miles Robbins. Yeah. Robbins. <laughs> I love one of my favorite scenes of the movie is how he's like, yeah, but in reality of things that happen today, like that's not that bad. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, he makes a good point. He's not wrong. He makes a good point. That was one of my hangups too. Was like looking back on like the reality of the situation is we're doing a podcast about a guy who killed five people. Yeah, and then I'm and then I think like, oh well. I guess again in the seventies we weren't used to constant uh you know yeah, active death. shooters and shit. Yeah, I mean the concept of a serial killer didn't even exist then. Right. Yeah, and Nathan look, Nathan goes in after like a hurricane and stuff like that, having to live with his parents and watches like, well, at least my entire family didn't get killed. Is that <laughs> yeah. right, right? Glass half full there. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, Nathan. That's No, you're up. right. But, but it's but, but the thing is I actually watched the um the cinema sins video for this movie earlier today oh. yeah i know but when that was one of the things they said is oh this case wouldn't be that interesting i'm like it's it was a kid that killed his sister yeah that hasn't said a word for 40 years yeah. the specifics are interesting yeah and, it is an interesting and would be case. worth telling a story well and see i don't i don't think that holds what because like how many people the the zodiac kill yeah. and we're still talking about him right all these fucking years later like this would definitely be an interesting case no you're right yes and this is the worst thing that's ever happened in this town yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. I, love, I, I hate how like the fame of a serial killer gets goes by their body count yeah they can kill one person it needs to be just as tragic yeah. right but going at again, let's get back to it i love how his uh you know little ninja like smoke bomb thing was kind of like a uh oh shit this is an awkward moment hey do y'all mind if i blow up this pumpkin real quick to change the <laughs> yeah. subject yeah that's how i'm gonna start ending conversations from now on the man knows how to get out of a weird situation he fucking does except for when he tries to go save his girlfriend later but we'll talk about that <laughs> right. what about the comment about halloween 2 here how do you guys feel about it love, love it. it you love it Absolutely love it because okay. you know i f- that is my least favorite thing about the franchise mm-hmm. is that they introduce that and i agree with Mally on that well no i i don't like the the concept of what they did in halloween 2 i have a problem with this this line of dialogue i i get it from a screenwriting perspective because yeah. you, we're so we're all we're, we all like to follow movie news and yeah. stuff like this is something we're into so but the average film goer walking into this movie thinking it's a new halloween sequel exactly isn't going to have read an interview with david gordon green where yeah. he's just like we're going back to basics you know exactly i, I think it's just the way that allison says it because she's like no, that's just something some people made up. Like she really exaggerates that some people part. It is kind of it is kind of a fuck you to the other screenwriters, though, including John, John Carpenter. Carpenter. <laughs> yeah, but I really don't think John Carpenter gave a fuck about that movie. John Carpenter has admitted that he fucking hates that that they did that. I, no, yeah. for sure. That he wrote he banged that screenplay out over a twelve pack one yeah. weekend. Is what he said. That's, yep, I love to it. make some money. Yeah, I will say like uh like just piggybacking off of what Nathan was saying uh the average screen go or like they might even if they read something like a blurb about how this is going straight off the original Mm -hmm. people may not have realized that the fact of oh michael and lori are brother and sister from the second one they don't realize that's from the second one yeah Yeah, the family thing is so baked into the mythology that it it is hard to kind of separate it literally it was it was said by marion chambers in a 10 second dialogue line in the backseat of a cop car with loomis like it it was so much of an over that's how we explained it type thing yeah and it was so i understand if people don't realize where the fuck did that come from like when did we realize that Mm -hmm. like the way that line is delivered in halloween 2 is is kind of similar to how 
it's dealt with in this movie. It's like, did you hear they're brother and sister? No yeah. shit. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah. shit, really? Like, cool. She was adopted by the Strodes. <laughs> no shit. He was a boy. She was a girl. Can I make it any more obvious? <laughs> it's like when I found out Halloween 2018 came out in 2018. <laughs> Whoa. S- speaking of the the family relationships, let's talk about Allison and Lori. Yes. I love their relationships so much in this movie. Me too. Like, Me too. Dude, the th- the three Strode women are all just fucking awesome in Incredible. this Judy Greer is I love her she's Incredible. so good like, in everything she's, yeah they all get one at least one hidden on Michael at the end I thought yes. that was fantastic. that's a nice touch yeah yeah is it is it bad and Mally I don't want you to say a single comment I don't want you to react I'm glad I can't see you I really hope Judy Greer dies in this next no why? what no it's because I like her so much is why I hope she does interesting does that make sense I don't think any of the strode women are gonna die mm. what the fuck did Judy Greer do to you JT <laughs> Jesus Christ she, she killed my family yeah, JT hates Jurassic World <laughs> oh I forgot she was in that movie I fucking hate that movie no, <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna lie like that like look so I love I love her I love her in this movie i love her i really do but it will affect me more because i mean we have a whole nother we have another one to go through yeah Yeah. we have a whole nother and let's be honest Lori can't die Mm. i don't know i think she could oh halloween resurrection would like a word with you so (laughs) (laughs) i would like a word with halloween resurrection okay let's be honest trick or treat motherfucker i think you're (laughs) overestimating how much the character of Lori. like i don't think she has that much plot armor in the in Halloween ends. Okay. I think anything's up for grabs. Okay. But my gut says none of the Strode women are going to die. You make a really great point about the, the the relationship between Allison and Lori is like they're mutually trying to save each other. Mm-hmm. Like Allison really wants this relationship. Lori wants Allison to not be coddled and to like be ready for the, the darkness that's out there. Mm-hmm. I love having just rewatched the first Halloween. Like I love how concerned Lori is with her books in that movie and in this one she's like fuck college yeah. here's three thousand dollars go to europe yep. go to mexico yes. go to mexico <laughs> and okay and this is another thing and excuse me i was gonna bring this up later on oh. but the tropes that like they're chiming in from the as a reference to the first one like sure. when allison looks out the window yeah and you see Lori. i i audibly laughed Same. in the theaters because in my head i was like that's kind of cheesy but in, it is but i love it yeah. yeah but here's the but here's the thing in the cheese to come it is not so bad no it's endearing in the cheese to come <laughs> in the cheese to come i don't know if i've mentioned this on this podcast but i i'm a fucking i'm a sucker for a classroom scene in a horror movie where the characters are talking about something so fucking on the nose like <laughs> yep. every and it's always like you know hamlet couldn't escape his fate yep. or in nightmare on elm street it's like the the scene like you know i have bad dreams and what was it in uh h2o where it was frankenstein's monster confronting them something yeah something like that yeah yeah and in and remember me it was about the 9 11 happening yeah yeah <laughs> they knew it they knew it was gonna they knew it was coming yeah okay we're not talking about that dustin can we that's please? how you knew remember me was a work of fiction <laughs> <laughs> can we move on dustin like we're not talking. also i i gotta ask too i want to put this to the floor i think i know the answer but mm-hmm. if you had to put the two like i rank them who who you thinks a bigger badass laurie strode in this movie or linda hamilton <laughs> in t2 oh i mean i'm getting huge sarah connor vibes from yeah that, especially the scene where she's like blasting all the mannequins i mean i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to give it to sarah connor sarah yeah, man. Too, as well Lori is fantastic don't get me wrong but she's not trying to prevent a fucking apocalypse okay like yeah like like laurie strodes is like backwoods tough. yeah let's be honest if laurie just decided to like die like this whole nightmare would end right you know like now if we're talking if we're talking sarah connor in dark fate which is like go. a similar age <laughs> I still might give it to Sarah Connor because okay. that, that bitch has fallen off of bridges <laughs> like, has like three rocket launchers at all times. Yeah, the thing about the final act of this movie with like the floodlights and the, the grates on the doors. The kill box. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, well. Lori's got this whole plan of getting Michael that we find out is getting Michael into the basement. But like, yeah, no. she turns the floodlights on after. It falls apart. He's already in the house. Yeah. It's to see, it's to show that Allison and her dad's really dead laying out in the yard yeah, somewhere. That, right. Who's not out 
on the lawn very long hey, before being shoved up into the closet. Hey, don't forget. Hey, don't forget. I know you're not going to mention this at all, but your dad's dead. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole like self locking, like the the I don't even know what you call it, like the garage door Those type shutters. Things, yeah, that she fucking made. Yeah. God, I was getting chills in the theater. I was like. Fuck, she knows better. She's clearing each room, closing it. Yeah. Clearing each room. Clo- She's like, I am not going to be in a fucking hallway with this guy ever again. <laughs> uh-huh. and, in, and in my opinion, it's from the first movie. Yeah. The first scene where like the dark doorway where his mask slowly, sh- sl- or slowly comes into focus. And then she... Yeah, my favorite shot from the original. Yeah. Okay. And then you got the scene from when he, you know, gets his core workout in and sits straight up. <laughs> yeah. And comes in and comes in behind and he her. does in this movie too yeah, yeah so he, he comes in behind her again from a room that she thought was clear yeah yep. so twice now no i love that there's there's so many small things like that that are just like clearly informed by her experience mm-hmm. yes um because this is a i mean this is a movie about a, a woman facing her abuser i mean this is someone who like the guy who ruined her life you know and she would have thought about every tiny detail Uh that he's played on her so yeah i thoroughly enjoyed this when they have her in the car watching michael get on the bus and she's just chugging out oh my god like, oh yeah it's my favorite scene from this entire it's movie. my yeah. favorite scene as well it broke my fucking heart man it's great jesus she's incredible the loomis sound alike is really good yeah. it did a great job yeah. it's so good it felt like a warm blanket to me yes. man hearing him over there i don't know i don't know if it's the same person but they also did a voice actor for uh h2o it's a different actor yeah it's different yeah but fun fact that actor the voice actor for dr loomis yeah. in h2o when to voice Johnny Bravo in the cartoon. Oh, really? No <laughs> shit. Did he really? Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, but anyways, moving on. I think that scene um, where she's drinking and stuff, that's like the first scene where we really see Jamie Lee Curtis, not Laurie Strode, but Jamie Lee Curtis yeah. back in action as the original Scream Queen. Like, yeah. She screams. Oh, sure. You see like you see like this fantastic like out of focus silhouette of mm-hmm. the shape. Silhouette, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that leads to the dinner uh, of her honor society like with her granddaughter she's trying so hard to be normal and she just can't to hold it together and in first time in the entire franchise she calls him the, the shape, shape. Yep. yep and i'm so hyped for that i just got chills i just got chills from you saying it. <laughs> same same yeah. yeah dude and i'm also drunk so this is <laughs> a full circle <laughs> guys when I saw this in theaters and she said that, thank God I wore my white pants. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I guess. I love this dinner scene. I love Judy Greer. Yeah. And I love that because I'm a big Archer fan. And Judy Greer is, of course, a voice on Archer. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lori straight up takes that wine glass and starts chugging it. Even does the <laughs> the holding up a finger uh-huh. to like, hold on while I'm drinking yep. to Judy <laughs> Greer. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Got a good shut laugh out of me. I love the dad. <laughs> in that scene yes Mm -hmm. he's so awkward i used to buy a peyote from your dad (laughs) so funny though which okay and and nathan quoted it earlier we all know who the boyfriend's dad is right yeah Yeah. lonnie lonnie Lonnie. (laughs) yeah the bully get your ass away from (laughs) like that i'm so excited about that and i'm so excited that he's coming to the next movie he's in the sequel yes he is who's playing tommy again uh anthony michael hall yeah yeah and who and who is playing Lindsay wallace the The original. original actress oh yeah yeah. who is wait 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 let me who is playing mary in chambers Mm. oh also i think the uh the original actress yeah nancy stevens i was like i actually have no idea (laughs) and then isn't uh pj souls in this movie isn't she she's the voice of the teacher yes yeah okay so now this is a segue into what i was going to talk to mally about oh god (laughs) i can't answer any of your questions (laughs) jt i know i know i know know. this is more of a subjective thing more like an opinion-based thing (sighs) The callbacks that we talked about so far, we talked about the whole like Happy Halloween, Michael, like Ugh. that cringy. I, I thought that was cringe. Yeah. The looking out the window and seeing Lori, I thought it was cringe. Ugh, the I conversation, what happened afterwards was fantastic. That's yeah. what made it for me that I thought it was okay then. And then we had the whole balcony scene where Michael threw Lori off a balcony. He Love it. turns, looks back. <sighs> At first I thought it was cringe, but I was like, you know what? It fucking works. I love it. It fucking, fucking works. Awesome. I love that moment. My theater erupted into applause during yep. that, dude. <laughs> yep. Same. Yeah. My, my dad, who I've mentioned before, doesn't love slasher movies like pumped his fist (laughs) he was so excited again guys wore my white pants (laughs) the only thing the only thing that was cringe to me was the whole happy halloween Uh 
This dude has traumatized your life and you have an opening to stab him in the back of the fucking skull. Yeah. It is weird that she does a little one liner, but I like the shot. You're not going to hit him with a one liner. Yes, the shot's fantastic. But with callbacks on how they can be hit or miss, <laughs> all this, the next movie, and I've only watched the first trailer, of course. They're hinting on not necessarily callbacks, but they're bringing back a lot of reoccurring characters from the first movie. Mm -hmm. Is it played well? Or, okay, so <laughs> Jesus. in your opinion, I guess I should start with, is it played well or is it just for there for fucking cannon fodder and putting asses in the seats? I'm terrified about that. <laughs> Mally said he loved the script. He said it was pretty fucking rock and roll, right? Well, he said... If they could pull it off. Yes. I wanted a Michael Myers on the back of a <laughs> fucking pickup truck killing people, keep killing rednecks like in Halloween 4. Huh. The first trailer looks very much like they're taking almost like two and four and putting them together, yes. which I am all fucking here for. Yes. It is extremely stylish so far from what I've seen. And it makes complete sense. Like there's a cut with the whole like the gun uh, garage door thing. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Someone can fit in there. That's how they survived a fire yeah but at the end of the day like yeah no like the old firefighters and shit i'm super fucking excited but with all these reoccurring characters i'm just scared <laughs> they're gonna play into a lot more like of the i don't want any more of the cringe i guess okay. is what i'm trying to say we'll, i guess we'll see yeah Ma mally's like can i talk now or like are we <laughs> moved on <laughs> yeah let's how about he answers the question you have to <laughs> i'm not answering that question all right um moving on then okay moving on th i will say this this isn't a spoiler but there's like there's some characters from like in that play pretty big parts in kills mm -hmm. that play the most minor of roles in this one. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I've 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 seen the I've seen the trailer and I've honestly I've probably dissected it more than I should have and I've they introduced a reoccurring character from the first movie and then showed her dead body and I was really upset about it. I was like, mm. come on, really? Huh. But I was I'm still a fan I'm still excited she wasn't important enough for me to be like well I'm not fucking seeing this movie <laughs> well I'm also I'm thinking about like very minor characters and I'm glad are showing up in the next one because like mm -hmm. there's for one scene uh, there's uh, the kids and everybody on the streets like trick-or-treating mm -hmm. and you see the woman dressed as the nurse yeah she's in the trailer uh, Julian's parents oh is that Julian's parents yeah oh that's Julian's parents mom and dad one's in a nurse outfit one's in a doctor outfit yes yeah. she's in the trailer for the next one so like, oh cool they're they're keeping this self-contained that's those are the characters i was referring to mm -hmm. yeah i like that but that tells me but that could also be a i mean and mally just stay quiet <laughs> okay. it could be a flashback or you could stop asking him <laughs> yeah just stop asking me questions i'm not asking <laughs> i'm speculating okay i'm not asking these kills could have happened in the 2008 film just off screen is what i'm trying to say mm. we don't know how this plays out yeah something could have happened to these characters in a movie that came out 10 years before it yeah yeah what are you talking about <laughs> shut up <laughs> yeah mally okay uh well let's get back to this movie yes i know we want to talk please. about halloween kills a lot but yeah let's get back to this one sorry i will say i i love one of my favorite uh bits of music in this movie i, I love the prison montage i also love uh, the the new version of Lori's theme the, mm -hmm. the plays when she breaks down outside the the uh, the restaurant yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. amazing and Judy Greer's performance in this scene she's so she becomes so detached yeah. when she's talking about her past you can tell she's been in therapy for years and she's just like she's looking through everything when yeah. she's talking about growing up in the fucking Black Widow training program <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah which is why I don't know if you noticed this she has a broken nose through the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah yeah <laughs> god damn fuck that movie she also can't have children alice is adopted horrible <laughs> way to tell her god she's got red in her ledger man <laughs> <laughs> moving on let's talk about the scene with the with the actual bus crash yeah i was gonna say michael's first on-screen kill is a child in this movie yes. i yes. know now i know why mally loves this movie <laughs> <laughs> any movie that has the guts to kill a children is okay in my book <laughs> one children that's <laughs> fucked up oh sorry yeah i like i like that it's the tamest kill of the movie but it's also like the most um a callback to annie's kill in the first movie yeah a little bit yeah, yeah but it is this kid's probably like, like what like 13 maybe yeah hey, dude and you hear his neck snap. Yeah. 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 Sound design's insane. And it's a thing. It's it's a moment where Michael doesn't even have to kill this kid. He could easily just take this car and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he doesn't. Nah. Nope. Nah, fuck that. Well, as 
JT said earlier he's not playing the long game yet. <laughs> no, not yet. So you have to be at least twelve years old or yeah, twelve years or older to get killed by Michael. Anything sure. lower, he's just kind of like, all right, fuck you. Yeah, long game him. You can't, you can't take of you can't take care of yourself. So I'll just kill your parents and yeah, yeah. yeah figure it out. I love the scene leading up to the bus crash though between the kid and his dad. He's fuck, like, is dance yes. really that important to you? He's like, yeah, it's what I'm into right now. Yeah, dad, it is. Like, I'll go hunting with you on the weekends, but you know, I'm missing dance class right now. Like, I love that whole little scene. It's a really endearing conversation. It is. That kid also sounds like. Like he's been smoking since you since birth <laughs> it's like you know dad i'm da- i'm missing dance class for this I- i'll go hunt with you on the weekend <laughs> it's it's played as a joke but i did find it endearing like yeah it's very sweet this could have been I, I think if rob zombie was doing this it would have been like oh you're gonna be in that sissy dance class blah 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 oh yeah 100 oh, sure. bunch of fucking queers yes yeah that's exactly the what dad it. doesn't want to hurt his feelings and he doesn't want to hurt the dad's feelings that's yeah. what i liked about it honestly Honestly, I legitimately think that scene is kind of a slight at the zombie films. Uh, maybe. Yeah, these two good old boys who are like woke a little bit. Yeah. You yeah. know, like it's nice. I don't know. There's something really nice about it. It's like, oh, look, the hillbillies are evolving. <laughs> yeah. It's like when my dad became okay with homosexuals after he watched a couple episodes of Modern Family. It was like, <laughs> look, they're taking steps. <laughs> wow. Hey, man, however you get there, you get there. Yeah. You know? As long as we get there. And he fucking hated nerds till young Sheldon came. <laughs> oh my god as long as we get there that's all that that's matters, right. right yeah that's right no i absolutely love and i actually have in my notes like the kids the teenagers and even the adults i think is very well played out in this movie i think this is the best acted halloween movie <laughs> I was like, so the characters <laughs> <laughs> i think there's a couple of the teenage characters that could just be like you go away now sure. and i'd be fine okay yeah 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 the boyfriend like and when the whole kissing of a tiger like oh kissing no, of like, a tiger <laughs> the tiger girl yeah yeah i know but i think adding the word girl in there is very important (laughs) kissing of a tiger (laughs) listen if you if you've never seen this movie and you're watching listening to this podcast let's figure some things out first okay (laughs) they'll know what i'm talking about yeah yeah people who haven't watched this movie is gonna be like yo motherfucker kiss a tiger (laughs) we gotta watch this movie this movie has been on rotation for almost 24 hours and i had to think about what you were referring to jt so (laughs) all right well anyway okay so uh, for those of you who don't know a woman a girl a teenage girl dresses up as a tiger for a halloween party mm-hmm. no shit and this also <laughs> came out in 2018 yeah. <laughs> big if true let's talk about the character of um of hawkins who gets introduced here yeah. so fucking phenomenal actor yes. yeah will patton's great will patton's always good i always call him coach yost i don't know if anybody else just refers him as that mm-hmm. sure that's just me no i call him his name but yeah, I get it. <laughs> no no even if i met him in real life i'd be like <laughs> yost yeah it's exactly yeah so his his character is essentially one that was there the night that michael got captured mm-hmm. back in the 70s mm-hmm. allegedly allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> yeah i i love that his 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 routine is his entrance into this movie is i'm playing pinball yes. in a gas station and yes. being offered a slushy yes. i'm like dude what the what a fucking life yeah i love him yeah <laughs> It's fantastic. Yeah, it's just dialogue with a with some kind of a uh, you know townsfolk. It's like you're not going to beat my high score, so what's the matter? It's such mm-hmm. a friendly encounter. Yeah, not knowing like yeah, everyone knows he's the one that caught Michael Myers, but it I don't know. He's like he moved on. It's this whole thing, and then when Michael comes back, it's like a, a haunting of the past. Like holy shit yeah i think that that little bit of dialogue that you mentioned like the, oh you're not gonna be my hard score and all that they do a really good job of selling this as being a small town everyone knows everybody extremely small yeah, yeah. and i love it yes and i i wish he didn't die in this movie yeah i wish he would be at least in the next one by the most by the most piece of shit character someone is playing him in 1978 in halloween kills oh uh, okay so i don't i don't know if there's like a a, a significant flashback or whatever yeah. but i'm i'm really looking forward to, to seeing how that plays out because i i love this character and i think I mean, the the casting of Will Patton, you immediately are on board for this dude. Like, mm-hmm. you want to see... He was on uh, the the sadly short-lived uh, Swamp Thing TV series on DC Universe, mm-hmm. and he plays, like, the scummiest motherfucker on the planet, and you're still just like, God, you were so charming you're so like i don't know there's just something about him that you want to root for Mm -hmm. his entire plan 
was to find Michael Myers on the fucking sidewalk and put it in fucking gear and hit him. Like he that's... says, he he tells Sartain, he's like, he's like, I'm gonna fu- I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah, I'm going to run over him. He makes it very clear, like this isn't a fucking joke. I was there that night. You weren't. You're like the you know the the new Haas in town. Yeah, but like I'm fucking like I saw these. I saw all these bodies. I had to stop his doctor from murdering him. <laughs> like, yeah, he is aware of the dangers and I'm not going to take another chance. Like, I'm going to hit him with my vehicle. Are you? <laughs> you it's not a question. It's not a debate. Yeah, it's going to fucking happen. And I fucking love it. He, he literally tells them, buckle up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he gives them. The Ben Tramer yep. from Halloween 2. The Ben Tramer Tramer? I wrote down how funny would it be if they got out of the car. And he exploded? <laughs> and no, he just looks down and he goes, God damn it, it's Ben Tramer's older brother. No. <laughs> that would have been great. Oh man, this is Ben Tramer's kid. <laughs> oh my God. Man. I would have lost it. Man, those that family's... I would have lost it. Oh, the Tramer family. Oh. Tramer family, y'all gotta stay off the goddamn sidewalks. <laughs> Quit putting on fucking michael myers man <laughs> i told you once i told you a thousand damn times <laughs> if you want to fix this arcane issue here's what you do yeah they run that they run michael over they get out of the car and they're they yeah they take the mask off mm-hmm. it's not michael and in the background you just see michael get into the car and drive to Lori's <laughs> house <laughs> yeah that's funny <laughs> And there you go. Now that's comedy. With with Allison. You keep yeah, you keep Hawkins alive for the next movie. Sartain uh-huh. doesn't turn evil. There you go. Can we talk about when 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 Sartain stood up with Michael's mask and anyone else like fucking audibly laughed? <laughs> so, I giggled. So <laughs> fucking awful. So fucking goofy. It's like what I it's like the first time I saw a picture of Dustin wearing his motorcycle helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like I just giggled. It's a it's a good sight. It's pretty funny. I really do I really do want that as a chase pop figure though. <laughs> Dustin in a motorcycle helmet? Yeah. No, man. you know what I, I so I hate that moment because he puts the mask on, he wears it for three seconds and takes it off. It's a very weird thing. Yeah. But the thing that I do like about it, the the kind of interesting idea, and this could be me reaching that's kind of nestled in there people keep talking about the mask like it's this fucking totem you know what i mean like it like maybe is the key to understanding michael and sartain puts on the mask and fucking carries michael with one hand and loads him up into the car and he like a fucking boss am i right almost like maybe there is power there or maybe he's just got (laughs) a lot of adrenaline from committing his first murder i don't know it's not fucking like masters of the universe here like disagree (laughs) that kind of i will say that kind of plays into uh just my theory Mm. again mally don't say anything okay i'm not saying a goddamn thing jt (laughs) jesus my theory because they focused a lot on the first trailer i don't even have my fucking headphones on right now (laughs) okay good good fucking keep them off we'll let you know when you can put them on somehow i feel like my uh due to the first trailer of the movie of halloween kills Mm. they focused a lot on unmasking him Mm -hmm. it's what it seems like and i feel like it's either a uh show to the community that like once we unmask him it shows that he is just a human being and we can obviously kill him or i like it it, what he thinks what michael thinks in his head like i have to have this mask on Mm -hmm. when i'm when i have the mask on i'm a different person and i'm completely the embodiment of evil etc etc i want to have it off i'm in popeye's terms it's his spinach it's spinach exactly it's his spinach um (laughs) exactly it's so so michael's just just smears raw spinach over his face <laughs> it's filled yeah it fills up the mask Ugh. you know i what i love is speaking of the mask the fucking podcasters their death scene uh, all this talk of trying to understand michael and the first thing aaron does is take a crowbar to that motherfucker yep. immediately yeah <laughs> look man like oh my god okay both of those podcasts i'm not gonna lie both like first off could both of them live no but one of them could like i'm sorry but if there's a mass murderer that we know of it is it's like dustin said there the, there's parts of this movie that feel very episodic like we have oh this is the act that follows the podcasters because they have to start the movie exactly they, like, they have to they have to get michael riled up and then here's the part of the movie where we're gonna watch teenagers go to a dance and then this is the part of the movie where like the the hunt happens to me it's a little different because it, this whole entire movie is getting michael back in the real world where you know he's out killing yeah it's how michael 
Michael got his groove back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like his mojo, if you will. So <laughs> yeah, baby. How, how, so how does he get his mask? It's the podcasters. How does he get his knife? It's that long one shot. How does Han Solo get his vest? Mm-hmm. Where does his gun come from? <laughs> how does he get the dice? Okay, okay. So did who shot first? You know, we don't know. Yeah. Wait, Lori. Definitely no. Lori shot first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lori definitely shot. How did he get to Lori's house? That's Dr. Sartain's whole ploy and everything like that. But I don't know that that makes it good screenwriting. I think it just makes it kind of e- e- efficient. Like yep. The pacing is efficient in this movie. It's just the, the logic doesn't always follow for me. Where I give it credit, they again, they wrote different scenarios. And this is just the one that everyone could disagree on so we kind of went with it that's what screenwriters do (laughs) do they can i put my headphones back on now no who who the fuck is that we're still talking (laughs) okay no put put them on put them on okay i'm back jesus christ so what part of the what part of the movie are we on now guys uh, <laughs> podcasters are dead we're only there <laughs> i know well we keep talking about a movie that's not out yet god damn it well how what about the teeth i thought the teeth was a great it's it's so scary that was a great <laughs> great touch that's that's michael's one of michael's biggest scamp moments in the movie i he's, think he's the tooth fairy oh absolutely it is <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm, ca- I'm here to cash in. Yeah. <laughs> Which, dude, how brutal is the shot of the gas station attendant with yeah. his jaw just fucking broken in half? Yes. That was, I think, another thing that kind of uh, turned me off to the movie a little bit the first time I saw it, because I think there's an elegance to the violence in Halloween, the original. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think that there's I mean, well, there, there's very little on screen blood. And in some of that is out of necessity, but other times it's just because that's that there was a scarier, more effective way to do this. Mm -hmm. And so whenever like the early reactions to this movie were coming out because it premiered at South by Southwest, I think people were like, Michael's fucking brutal in this one. It's nuts. And I was just getting like flashbacks to, you know, Tyler Maine stabbing a dude a thousand times for yeah, no reason. Fair. And I, I I think for the most part, the kills work in this movie. There's one that is so absurd, but I still kind of like it. Which one? The stomp, the head stomp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's a little it's a little much. Yeah. It's a little Rob Zombie. And it, but uh, but it's but because of who it happens to, I'm OK with That's it. Yeah. But I also think uh, there was this interesting point that they made on Halloween Unmasked where the kills ramp up through the movie. Like they start kind of low key and get more like more fantastical as yeah. the movie goes on like he's gaining power so that's kind of interesting yeah, yeah that's true well I, I also like that you can see michael throughout this whole gas station scene yes like that was one of the cool things is you can see him get out of the truck you can see him go in and start beating the shit out of the mechanic like, <laughs> the the production design of the gas station is really interesting because it looks exactly like the interior of the gas station in halloween 4 yeah. like when he goes in to check on the mechanic that's right. yes. um which i i love my favorite shit in Halloween 4 is just the the third of the movie where Loomis is like just barely missing Michael killing a bunch of people a bunch yeah, of times. Agreed. <laughs> I don't know. The redneck mob is kind of hard to beat. Man. That's pretty great. <laughs> Which due to the trailers, I think we're getting that back. <laughs> I am all in on this idea of an entire town. Just like I'm fucking had it with this shit. I yeah. fucking had it with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole town is going after him. I'm, I'm all in on that idea. I've, I've, I've had and feel with Michael. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> God damn it. That's some that's low hanging, but what? Whatever. Michael gets his mask back here. Yeah, <laughs> his mojo. I, <laughs> I always get a little scared because I always think he's gonna pinch his little hands closing the trunk because he's on the edges. Yeah, I always like watch her, watch out. Which I will say, the imagery of him just cl- like closing a car trunk is hilarious to me for some reason yeah, it is weird right like he kind of <laughs> shoves his arms like i don't know I, it, it is weird when you see michael do regular things mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like mowing his yard or something okay but no like my thing it, the shots in this movie of him looking at the camera which are few and far between but like the shot of like the cameras in the back seat of the vehicle mm-hmm. and he's looking straight to the camera after he had his mask on was fucking terrifying yeah, the yeah. shot of when he gets his mask put back on after the Sartain situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's just looking straight at Allison, which the camera's point of view of Allison was fucking terrifying. Yeah. You're in a backseat. Oh, Allison dipping out of the, the back of the SUV and Michael just like, huh, 
turns his head <laughs> yes can we talk of like so we're on the kills now right yeah, yeah. these are the halloween kills okay so <laughs> yeah yeah sure <laughs> these are the halloween kills <laughs> we we made it to the part where he kills people right <laughs> sure i feel like a lot of the off-screen deaths by far i'm just I'm not necessarily a missed opportunity because i feel like if i knew how he did those We'll take the magic out of it. Oh, yeah, the jaw and the, the, the gas station attendant. I'm okay not seeing the jaw rip. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm talking about the jack-o'-lantern head. Uh, oh, like, I don't want to see yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I I love that Michael's in his 60s and he's still doing arts and crafts. because he puts, he puts the sheet on Virginia Gardner. <laughs> yeah. He also throws the pumpkin that her boyfriend carved for her in the fish tank yeah. like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was just an act of, like... You know what? Fuck Halloween. I'm gonna throw this shit in the park. He's getting he's getting scampy with it. Yeah, he is. What if he was? What if Michael Fodley spoke and he was just like, "Guys, I I fucking hate Halloween. I'm a yeah. Thanksgiving guy. Like <laughs> you can't." I genuinely love that that stuffing shit. Yeah, like that shit is fucking. Like I don't like I I've always fucked with Easter. Yeah. I don't know. I like hunting eggs. Like it's tight. But no, going back to the off screen kills, we got uh um again nathan help me with his name uh oh dave dave, dave. yeah dave's not here man <laughs> he's dead <laughs> okay dave's dead but actually had a time stamp tattooed on his shoulder of when he died yeah, yeah. that's the help the coroner yeah <laughs> yeah help the coroner. thank god for that you know and then we had the police officer with jack lantern head which is fun fact is the makeup effects designer for the movie oh, oh really interesting yeah he made a he made a mold of his own head and made it into a carved up jack lantern that's great guys real talk if i was a makeup designer I would constantly be just like making versions of myself. Like I would be leaving. I would. I would be leaving casts of myself everywhere. Nathan, I know your parents, and they don't deserve that. Okay, like, they don't deserve that at all. Pause, pause. Pause. Hang on, Nathan. Nathan. Yeah. Real talk for a second. Uh huh. Are you gonna fuck the mannequins of yourself? I was just gonna ask. I. It wouldn't be the first thing I did. I take the. I take them on a date. You didn't outright say no, and that's horrifying. Well, I'm a romantic. Oh my god! Look, is but what is that? Is that just masturbation? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh man, let's be honest here, Mally. Think about it. I don't. We'll wait. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. <laughs> we took. We took. Sorry, we took longer of a moment of silence for that than we did earlier for an actual dead person, <laughs> and that's upsetting. Welcome to the Silver Linings playlist, JT. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> there it is. There it is. We're at one of my favorite scenes in the movie, which is Julian and Vicky arguing. Yeah. Uh, while they watch Repo Man, which is pretty rad. Yeah. yeah. I I, I want to. Sp- I would be into a spinoff that's just the adventures of Julian and Vicky. Oh my god, he's so fucking funny, dude. Same. This little kid is so funny yeah, so good so funny. like when mike when michael jumps out of the closet and starts attacking his babysitter his first reaction is oh, oh shit, shit. <laughs> which didn't work for me in the theater and then this time i was like no that's a totally honest reaction like yeah. that's, a, that's a fair reaction he yes. comes down the stairs and says don't go up there dave you're you'll fucking die, die. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but also when when he first comes down the stairs and he's like there's a guy in my room and Vicky's like, oh, I'll go up and look. He goes, send Dave. Yeah. 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 He's like, no, send him. <laughs> like, he, Julian's just trying to get rid of the competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That entire interaction was fantastic. Their conversation is so sweet. Like, where he's just like, yeah, I like you too. Like, that that whole little bit is so nice. And, and then when she puts him to bed, she's all like, e- to be like honest, you are my favorite. You're my favorite kid. Yes. Baby, yeah. You're, you're my favorite kid. It was so endearing. But also... When we first get introduced to them, and he's like, "Oh, my nasty ass toenails, all that stuff," and then she says, "I'll tell your mom about your browser history." He just yeah. goes, <sighs> "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> I I also in that scene where he's trying to get Dave to go because he's like, "There was someone outside my door. I saw him." And there's like, he's like, "It's it's probably nothing," and he goes, "Shut, Shut up, up, Dave." <laughs> I heard him breathing. <laughs> Um, which follows the strangest line in the movie where she leans in and says, you are so getting dry fucked tonight. I liked it. That, I liked that. What line. a weird thing. Because they're teen, <laughs> they're teenagers. Yeah, man. Those. Like Nathan, like they like, I don't know, man. Yeah, they could be fucking right. But like, well, isn't that what his tattoo is, is that he's planning to lose his virginity that night? Yeah. Well, I mean, then he's going to get that shit corrected. because <laughs> He's only getting dry fucked. <laughs> the only thing that fucked him was life. <laughs> this is the, the weirdest scene of the movie to me is the whole motor 
motorcycle thing with Dave. That was kind of weird. This is a really bizarre edit. He's sitting outside, he's smoking a joint, and he looks up like he sees something, and then the next shot is him walking around the corner to the shed. Yeah. Did he see the motorcycle? Like, th- Is he Superman? Do we know? I just don't know what the motorcycle has to do with anything. And also... Who the fuck leaves their keys in it like that? <laughs> the motorcycle seems like it was left over from a version of the script where he didn't hear her getting killed yes. because he was revving the motorcycle. Yeah. But that's not how it plays out. Yeah, no, I, I think like when you read it on paper, that's exactly what it seems like. Yeah, uh, I think it's just him stepping outside to smoke a joint. Sure. You know, just like whatever. And because he started out on the like the back porch, like not giving a shit. Right. And then right. kind of looks and it seems like it could be an oh. And that was also, I remember when I first watched it, mm-hmm. one of my favorite scenes from the first movie is the whole like clothes hanger with mm-hmm. the sheets yeah. and Michael sitting there. I thought that was going to be a play on that. Well, oh. it, it kind of is, though. I think that the, well, we get that iconography. There's a couple moments like that where we get that iconography to kind of like make us think we know what's coming and then something else happens, yeah. which I, I kind of like. It plays off of audience expectation. Keeps us guessing. Yeah, it keeps us guessing, keeps us moving. And then as he walks through, he sees the motorcycle and like, oh, this motherfucker just wanted to fuck around on a motorcycle. I guess it's just it's a weirdly it's a weird scene, well, though. I think they could have solved it very easily by just having him earlier say something like, oh, I, I want to get a motorcycle or something like that. Something <laughs> like the like the nightmare movies where someone's like, ooh, bugs. And yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just give me that. Give me that foreshadowing. I think that could have done it. Um, the sound of Vicky's nails on yes. the floor. Oh, don't I'm, don't care for it. I have a it. thing for nails and I can't stand it. And the knife plunging into her spine Ugh. it's rough i feel like and the but but she did put up a little bit but i hate that the her downfall was just a uh you know she was she was wearing socks, socks. yeah should have been wearing crocs <laughs> that's why i keep shoes on all the time yeah. i need for traction yeah also you're a never nude <laughs> there are dozens of us <laughs> <laughs> literally doesn't <laughs> when we go to like what this is uh playing off of which is the first movie like michael has always been in the shadows yeah the realism of like him going from like a dark room which is a kid's room which has night lights fish tanks whatever and this is a hallway light i thought the contrast was absolutely fantastic as he walked mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. Yeah. um seeing him in complete like a hallway light that's supposed to light it. like it was yeah, it's it's surreal and it, it works especially because you know hawkins has been waiting for something to jump out of the darkness and instead he just sees him on the fucking stairs and yep. he's just like michael like michael like it's casually walking down the stairs as two people are shooting at him yes will never not be funny <laughs> it's pretty funny but it is like it is chaos we didn't really even talk about the tracking shot that leads to this oh, did we? yeah no we skipped it yeah all right, that, all right. We're, do the we want noise i'm sure there's a we want bit that you have here oh, you, yeah, yeah, oh, got yeah, it. yeah yeah on. but also before we do that uh, i want to say one last thing about this scene i think we got to talk about the epidemic of something that's going on with the kitchen knives in this town yeah that are just able to hold up entire bodies oh sure we don't have to we don't have to talk about any of that if we don't want to well okay look dc like i don't know about you like i have nice kitchen knives bro like i be cooking <laughs> yeah my shit is pristine i can hold a body up okay all right so so it's about two foot long kitchen knife yeah like you with with your fucking like janky ass knives that you bought at walmart maybe not but like you know i buy quality <laughs> <laughs> you got that you got that insignia kitchen knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Yeah. All right, we're going back. All right, so that tracking shot is dope. God dang. It's, gr- it's great. It's absolutely phenomenal. I wish they did more stuff like this because it helps that it's the character of Michael that we're tracking because Michael is a stalker. Yeah. So it, we get that same kind of feeling following through, like stalking his next victim yeah. and stuff. I just wish that scene was a little bit longer and that it was a true one. I'm fine. I'm fine with the length. Yes, um, I am too. A phrase I've heard Mally say plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Every time Nathan comes over, Mally's Alley, you'll like the link. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you just wait, JT. Wait till you find out what the prize is for being a three time guest. <laughs> so, the tracking shot. Mm-hmm. I like that we don't stay with Michael the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, I like that he kind of ventures out of frame and we like go into like the window and see that woman talking on the phone and having that little dialogue. That's God, great. And then just get stabbed with the fucking neck. <laughs> and you see him like, you see his shadow going to the backyard yep. yeah it's absolutely phenomenal i do think the stab effect is a little weak okay yeah we all agree 
agree that that CGI was pretty rough. Yeah. But if it allowed them to like in the budget get that tracking shot in, by all means, it's it's a it's a bullet worth taking. You know. Yeah, I agree. Fine. It's not terrible. It's just it, it is like if I'm staring straight at it. Yeah. So from the start, from the start where the kids run into Michael Myers, which are playing, they have a boombox on their shoulders. A direct reference to Halloween, Halloween Two. two. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, which that kid was played by Mustafa Dakad's uh, nephew in Halloween Two. Oh, yep. cool. But this this whole scene is reminiscent of Halloween 2 of yes, Michael going house to house yeah. and that lady's even wearing uh, like a pink bathrobe like Mrs. Elrod yep. mm-hmm. that actually Mrs. Elrod is or they referenced that in Oscar's death we'll, yeah. we'll yep. get to in a little bit they track he's like oh sorry mister obviously those kids are old enough to not get killed you can, you can again you gotta be this tall to get killed <laughs> or even know who Michael Myers is probably. Exactly. you gotta right. be this tall to ride his knife yeah, yeah. exactly Jesus. that's that's another <laughs> Mally's Alley situation we don't want to talk about yeah. but anyway so then it cuts to him and he does this look like he's looking for a way to kill someone in, in private yeah, he does he does he walks around and he's just like oh I want to do it so bad there's too many options so immediately he goes to his right Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And we, we're, we're following him. And then he sees someone coming from the shed into the house. Yeah. Which is to the stage left. <laughs> um, so as he walks by, he looks to the left where they enter to sh- see if they're looking mm-hmm. and they're not. So he goes straight into the shed, grabs a hammer, which is another callback to Halloween, Halloween 2, two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and walks in. The tracking shot stops into the kitchen. And he just beats this woman to death with a hammer six times off screen. The way he enters the kitchen, stops, and turns his whole body to the left with the That's hammer That's what I'm saying. It's- oh my god. It's, that entire scene was terrifying. It's like he turned his head first and then just like, almost like, again, Dick Warlock's like robotic. Yeah. It's great. Movements. It was fantastic. Cock yeah. wizard. <laughs> Cock wizard. Cock- god damn it. Nathan's been holding onto that joke for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can we man. get I guess we get we haven't really talked about it too much, but yeah, Lori has this whole time been tr- like driving around trying to find Michael. Yeah, she almost shoots Will Patton. <laughs> I love- Actually, I love the I love that scene because it seems like they make the uh, the notion that they know each other without us having to get this whole dialogue. Yeah, shift. In, in any other movie, he would have been like, "All right, Lori, hand me the gun," but he he doesn't. She goes, "Frank, he's here," and he goes, "I know." Like it's he's fantastic. he wants to help, and I want you. Yeah, he's like, I, you're just as useful with a gun as I am. Right, you exactly. Need, like, hold on to that shit because this is what we're going up against. Which yeah. I love when they first run into each other. Like, she hits him over the head and he's just like, oh, what the fuck? He's like, oh, fucking yeah. Frank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's annoyed. That- there's a there's a familiarity there yeah. that's a, that is communicated really well. Oh, so good. This is also where she gets introduced to Sartain mm-hmm. as the you're the new Loomis line. The, the reverence, the reverence with which he says laurie strode yep. like he is like this is the missing piece of his research like yes. is, it, she's i love that moment it's the only thing i do like about sartain's character is like he, again when he's a, he's obsessed with michael myers which means he's obsessed he's you. with <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shut the fuck. he's like he sees laurie and just starts fangirling exactly. so hard yeah. he's like oh my god he says oh my god i have all your eps <laughs> <laughs> even the bootleg stuff that was nathan at our foxy's Zamp show <laughs> Oh that's my true. god. That's true. That's a weird flex that we opened up for Foxy Shazam. And anyway, so <laughs> that was a flex in 2011, man. It was, which was when the show was. <laughs> yeah, those dudes were like, hey, you want to come drink with us? I'm like, I'm 20. They're like, do you want to come drink with us? And I was like, bro, okay. And then we started talking, we smoked weed and uh, started talking about Trimmers for like. We talked about the Trimmers movies. Yeah, it was a good time. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, that was the only character that, or as far as Dr. Satan, Satan, shit. Sartain. Sartain. <laughs> Saltine. Saltine. <laughs> Dr. Shit. <laughs> Dr. Sardine. That's the only thing I liked about him was his obsession with Lori because it shows that he was obsessed with the entire case. That includes Loomis, Michael, and Lori, which yeah, is sure. like the trifecta of this entire situation here, right? Yeah. I mean, so it shows that Michael's out in the wild now. Lori's out in the wild now. I'm the new Loomis. Yeah. This is happening. That's which was his plan the whole time. Yeah. By the way, JT, I don't know if you heard, but I'm sending you a picture right now. <laughs> I just want you to take to take a look. <laughs> okay. But while that happens, anyway, movie. Let's not sidetrack anymore by what you did last yeah. night. Let's keep talking about the movie. I, I love the 
the line of Lori saying, I've prayed for him every night to escape. Yes. And then him saying, well, why would you wish for that? That's a dumb thing to pray for. Yeah. She's like, so, so I can kill, kill him. him. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like, Lori is not to be fucked with in this movie. No. <laughs> Holy shit, Dustin. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> You've come so far. God damn. Yeah, we didn't even mention, like, as we're recording this, Dustin met Tommy Wiseau last night. <laughs> yeah. So funny. All right. So moving on. This is when we get our first look at Karen's Christmas sweater, which I love. Yeah, it's so great. Like, that fan family does not fuck with halloween yeah. i love uh I, oh and then we e, e, we go to the kids at the party okay okay we can skip that because can we please talk about oscar's death yeah because this is the best well i i do i think there's something interesting about that i mean i i think the scene is unnecessary yes. it just kind of gets uh allison you know running away uh you know from the from the party it's got a great score during this scene great great music but with the argument between her and cameron i think is super realistic because cam like it looks like that girl kisses him yeah and all he would have to say is she that, kissed me yeah she kissed me i'm sorry that that happened yeah. and that it hurt your feelings it wasn't you know that wasn't something I would, yeah because he's clearly not into it when it happens yeah but but nathan how else would her phone end up in nacho cheese yeah. right but what he does instead is he acts like a teenage boy and just starts like making it her problem you know what I mean? He doubles down on it. Gaslighting the fuck out of yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's a really realistic scene. I think yep. it's unnecessary, but I think it's well acted and, and pulled off well. Well, I think there's also something that we haven't really addressed yet. And Jamie Lee Curtis has even said this herself that this movie comes out like right around when like when Me Too and Time's Up and all that's going yeah. on. It's as we talked about, it's produced by Miramax, mm -hmm. which has its own problematic history. Mm -hmm. And all of the men, for the most part in this movie, are just they suck. garbage human beings yeah like, except <laughs> except for hawkins yes. like i I'll, i'd let hawkins babysit my kid and arguably ray ray's, ray's doing, doing his, his best, best. <laughs> if he could just keep the peanut butter to him <laughs> <laughs> then you get like cameron being a total asshole that mm -hmm. when he doesn't have to be he'd easily yeah like you said nathan just clear up the air but then you have oscar who you think is like oh this is a good guy this mm -hmm. is him helping her he's a funny guy right he's he he's a good looking yeah, guy. yeah. He, he steps in and he fucking and he gets he gets the absolute best death scene and like to me this gets the and it for all the dead meat listeners out there the <laughs> yeah. youtube channel he gets the golden chains all this entire Hell fucking yeah. movie but no, he gets instant karma for being a bad person as much as i hate it because i did like his character up until that point yes. you know like and i feel like he was drunk and i feel like it it could be comic relief in the next movie if they did decide to let him live yeah well he's got comic relief all in this his death scene yeah <laughs> exactly there's a part of it that seems like he feels genuinely bad about it yes yes he does but also like when she he kisses her and he's like oh well you're not his first thing he says is oh well, you're not with cameron anymore right yeah his best friend it's pretty fucked up she immediately comes back with well that doesn't mean i want to be with you <laughs> what makes it even worse what makes it worse is there's a deleted scene that they all left the party together actually oh. and the cops they're all walking down the street and then cops you know put their lights on because you know there's a fucking killer on the loose right yeah right and then they're like wait a second let me smell your breath to cameron and cameron's super fucking drunk they don't oh. catch oscar mm -hmm. and they pretty much and and cameron being the good guy he tells oscar as he's getting handcuffed because of his family history lonnie's oh, kind of known as a drunk sure he tells us he tells oscar being a good guy he's like get allison home yeah go straight there oh, blah, blah, blah. shit and so cameron actually yeah cameron actually gets arrested that makes oscar way more of an asshole yeah. way, way more. more of an asshole right but yeah. his his also his immediate reaction you know is a very promising young woman moment of like no i'm actually a really nice guy <laughs> yeah yes and he even says don't tell cameron i'm like how about you clear the air with Allison first, then worry about Cameron? Right. <laughs> yeah, figure this shit out. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> and Cameron disappears from this movie. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's why, because in the deleted scene, he's technically in jail for like being drunk and underage right now. Yeah. But holy shit, the fucking motion light scene. It's a great like build up, but also it's undermined by all of the jokes that all the riffing. Yes. Yeah. Okay, man. Oh, you're being silly. So good. Yeah, like, oh, they were feeding me guacamole in really sexy ways <laughs> no but that's him talking to allison but when he's talking to quote unquote mr elrod him being like have you ever had just a girl that you couldn't get i i loved i love that line oh um, <laughs> and to me the michael myers behind the bushes is this generation or the 2018's version of the whole uh sheets on the oh yeah the, the sheets, sheets yeah. on the yeah. on the on the 
clothes yeah. yeah holy shit yeah it's good or just like every time the lights go out and come back on he's like closer like uh, uh i actually uh. saw a behind the scenes of like uh david gordon green talking about how like the whole getting impaled on a fucking like gate like that mm-hmm. yeah. was like a childhood childhood fear of his so he's like i got to make it a kill <laughs> you're gonna say fantasy <laughs> <laughs> This is how I want to go. But also, this is the easiest death in the movie to avoid, yeah. I think. Yeah. You're in a whole backyard, and you run straight to the fence, <laughs> and then you stay there while Michael lumbers over to you. Well, you know what's funny is when they're when they're doing their little sh- shortcut, she says, ah, this, like, this gate's dangerous. There's a lot of poison ivy. What if Michael hadn't impaled him on the gate and instead just like rubbed his face in poison ivy? <laughs> <laughs> Playing the law game, yeah. yeah. He's like, I know you're allergic. And then he brings that same poison ivy to the kid in the cradle that he did <laughs> yeah. just fucking playing pure. that long game again baby you just you just see michael doing the rose petals that that tricky was doing <laughs> <laughs> tricky and oh. the michael myers is just what the surgeon general warned you about michael myers is his own man like liberace <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh. Wait, no, the, when allison comes back and sees oscar impaled on the fence the mm-hmm. fucking score <laughs> the fucking yeah the score ramp up right there is fucking crazy I'm sure you have this clip somewhere can uh, we... i don't but i can pull it up <laughs> jt jt saying let's go to a clip yeah <laughs> let's go to this i believe we i believe we have a clip from that movie right now right <laughs> what if i just played a clip from mac and me right now <laughs> i watched uh the little bit of behind the scenes i do have on the blu-ray is yeah. uh it's actually john carpenter and his son with one other assistant that made this daniel davies yep son of the son of dave davies from the kinks uh his godson uh essentially took a a bow from a, a cello and ran this across an electric guitar yep yeah. it sounds great absolutely phenomenal score and it gave me chills we, you know we talked about this a little bit with halloween six where i i think the guitar in that score is really cringy yeah um you know like like the yeah. Sort of. Well, because that was an awful sting. This right. is more of like a. Um, it's it's the Halloween version of Brom. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and it's all. Yeah. It's a dirge like mm-hmm. this. And then there's a there's a similar bit in the the prison montage. There's a similar bit in the shape is monumental. Yeah. Like they do some really cool recurring motifs that are just literally like this is how you know you're fucked. Yeah. yeah. It's just like this very heavy. You know, uh, the sky is falling kind of sound. Mm-hmm. And to me, they pick the perfect moment to pull this score out yes. because mm-hmm. this is the first time that you know allison and michael become face to face there's yeah. a gate between them so she's safe at the moment yeah we also get like a, a a kind of a riff on the ending of halloween where she's going house to house and people aren't letting her in yes, yes. which yes. is the scariest thing in the original movie to me i mean from Allison's point of view, she's never seen Michael. Yep. She only has heard about it from her grandmother. This is see actually seeing the boogeyman. Yes. Like yes. this is <laughs> this is the this is the thing that has been under her bed in her closet exactly. her whole life, her whole mother's life. In your head X is never mind. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Metallica. Sorry, yep. um, Jesus. <laughs> but no, you're right. I was gonna like, like that play on the whole on the first movie where Laurie is banging on people's house and they're turning off their lights. Like, yeah, fucking maniacs. Yes. I mean, <laughs> that's the scare. That is the scariest scene in Halloween to me. Is the someone turns on their lights and they don't let her in. Yeah, yeah the scariest part is <laughs> fucking the indifference of people in the su- in the suburbs. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Oh, well, nothing bad happens in this neighborhood. You must be fucking on drugs, right? What if um in the in the montage of Allison running and knocking door to door? Yeah. Yep. What if she reaches the house of that guy in Sarah Silverman that's like, "Oh, these women so horny, so impatient." And then he just falls on <laughs> the stairs and dies. What a deep cut <laughs> reference. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about but it's cool (laughs) yeah that's a very niche reference sure another piece of score i really like which is a little more i don't know it's not as like in your fucking like rock and roll in your face as uh the shape hunts allison but it's when allison is running through the woods yeah. uh, leading oh, yeah. up to the final which is that like mellow piano riff yes. yeah, yeah. i love that shit so much there's there's really interesting interpret like like new interpretations of the original score too mm-hmm. like yeah. there's that there's that slower take on laurie's theme there's the new take on the halloween theme that adds in a couple of extra like half notes like yep. yeah and there's a there's a version of uh the myers house theme that pops in a couple of times yeah. that i think is really interesting which i am so excited for them to play on and build on in the halloween kills yeah. because 
to me, the Halloween, like the Michael Myers home is just as much of a character as Michael Myers himself. Yeah. The one time that we get the sting is when he sees Laurie oh. missing, right? Yeah. Yep. It's, it's so good. <laughs> yep. It's so, so good. good. So good. <laughs> Fucking slaps, yeah. dude. It's so good. All right. You guys want to hear the score again? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. I do. Yes, I do. Right. Let's roll the clip. <laughs> This is already great. Yeah. Oh, fuck fuck us. God. Incredible. Incredible. I hear that guitar riff every time I uh, climax. <laughs> yeah. You hear the. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I hear that scream. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, you you do have a very ladylike voice, <laughs> which, which is another thing. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis being the original screen queen, of course, she still has her chops. We learned that in the whole I call it the shape scene where she's drinking and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I saw the shape. Yeah, yep, I saw the shape. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! I stabbed him in the eyes. I saw the shape. <laughs> I think Allison has a great scream. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think she has a great scream, and it plays on it. And we're, we're just gonna pick. We're gonna pick that line out. And just <laughs> save that for future court evidence. I thought about that the moment I said it. I regretted it so much. Th this is when we discover that Lori has Hugh Jackman's basement from Prisoners. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. This is actually a perfect example to talk about this because right before we started rolling, I was watching um, the interview with Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Smith at the san diego comic-con before this movie premiered oh yeah. sure and yeah. i don't i'm not obviously not going to have the balls to say she's wrong because it's jamie lee's curtis and this is her fucking role you shut your fucking mouth she says she has a line in this scene where toby huss and judy grew are down in the in the secret room with her and uh -huh. she's like he's been waiting for me he's been waiting for this night he's coming for me for me I, on this watch i took this as just Lori, the character of Lori being incredibly delusional yeah oh interesting not that things she's wrong interesting she made it all about her yes because i don't think there was anything necessarily special about Lori. i just think she was the one that happened to survive yes yes absolutely i think and i think that that's the terrifying thing about the original movie movie is that the only the only reason he comes after her is because he sees her yes yep. he specifically doesn't he doesn't go looking for her in this movie it is a coincidence that allison finds him yep. and i i think that there is something very true about that where you know this guy is pure evil he doesn't care about the people that he kills he he's not coming for her exactly but but jamie lee curtis i mean even this interview was just like you know she she escaped this this terrible thing and now it's coming back for her and i'm like but i don't think he's coming back for you i no. think it's just it's just coincidental that's the case in h2o in h2o that is the case yes. but in this one it is it, the only reason that he even arrives at laurie's house is because sartain wants to force a reunion yes. yeah yep. yeah he pointed a fucking great white shark when not referencing resurrection or anything he pointed a <laughs> shark in the there's a shark in halloween resurrection no, yeah uh uh, <laughs> uh uh, Buster Rhymes says Michael Myers is a killer shark <laughs> <laughs> and baggy ass overalls. Baggy ass overalls. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a great line. In this movie, or what I like about this movie is uh, it ruined Laurie's life, yes. yes, right? But it was just a fucking footnote in, in Michael Myers' life. life. <laughs> and she can't, yeah, she can't handle the fact. And he doesn't give a shit if it's Laurie or not. Yeah. If she just happens to survive. Because in, in the first movie, the first time they saw each other, she just happened to look out of a fucking window and yes. she, that he was looking in. And then her friends made a, hey, speed kills, and he slept on fucking breaks he's like you know what i'm gonna fucking murder all of them yes. yeah <laughs> that was it the original halloween he drives around town like for a little while he's watching tommy for a little while he's watching you know sheriff bracket the 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 thing in halloween is he's picking his moment yes mm -hmm. uh it, it it has no it has no bearing on who it is and i think that that's that is uh, to your point, Mally. Like that's that's the the thing that the sister angle hurts oh, in yeah. the in the sequels because it the whole series becomes co opted by this idea of legacy and of him having to go after specific people yeah. yes. to the point where. 
that's why that's why resurrection is the death of the series because when you kill laurie strode there's no point to any like what's the stakes yep. why do we care what you know it, in the words of carmine laguzio oh what's boy. the show oh my god <laughs> i i i want a scene in halloween kills of judy greer or even uh allison just being like you're not special yeah yeah you're not special like this whole thing is not about you like yeah, humanize them and i say that as someone who loves laurie strode yes <laughs> oh my god dude I, I love her to absolute death like i would take jamie lee curtis out to a very very nice dinner <laughs> lobster dinner <laughs> a lobster, and i will call her back <laughs> you'd have to get christopher guest's permission but I sure don't give a shit who i gotta ask like <laughs> i absolutely love jamie kurt jamie lee Th- curtis this whole thing with laurie though is is very reminiscent of like in breaking bad when jesse gets taken away from walt by gus and sure, yeah. what the whole time walt is like oh this is all about me right and it's like dude what is wrong with you does it not everything relates to breaking bad I, it does i guarantee it does that's another way she is processing this trauma she yes. has to make it a mission yes. yeah she has to make it a thing that oh i thought you were gonna say by binge watching breaking bad <laughs> <laughs> binge watching breaking bad i've heard breaking bad's quite good that's that's not a bad idea she she <laughs> says i mean like that that is how she's dealing with it even if michael never escapes she can live her life preparing mm-hmm. like she can know that she's ready for it and that's also why she wants him to escape because she's like this all has to have fucking meant something yep. exactly because if he escapes and he may have killed people but if i kill him at the end that means all this was worth it that means what i've done was that not for absolutely jack shit i didn't get my kid taken away from me yeah i have no relationship with my granddaughter well and she even says she's like if your mom hates me but she's prepared and you're safe then it's fine it's fine if i kill him at the end of all of this and he i know he is dead it's all worth it. Yeah, that's that's what I want. I want that scene exactly. in one of these sequels. Is somebody just talking to her about this? Yeah, and that's why I always loved the Halloween series because it's the most realistic. Yeah, there could be a complete serial killer. Like there could be druids underneath the yeah. the asylum. There could be a man in black. Okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the oh, fuck up. Oh no. Yo, but those fucking boots though. Those sick <laughs> boots. boots. Also, just a recommendation. Just like a a, a tip. A life pro tip. Sure. Uh, never, ever, ever, ever get into the back of a police cruiser. No. <laughs> if you're not under arrest. No, fuck that. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. Don't do it if you are under arrest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, are you going to call an Uber? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I'm under arrest. Could you take me to the... <laughs> it never works out getting in the back of a police cruiser. No. no. <laughs> Those child safety locks are on bitch yeah because there's no <laughs> door handles at all don't ask me how i know but <laughs> if you've ever been in a bike of police cruiser it is just flat panel there is no door handle there's absolutely nothing sure especially when someone throws in a serial killer unmasked yeah. yeah try to find your way out of there the shot of her looking down at the seat and seeing the mask on oh, and michael's hands yes. and just the breathing so good and then this is where um, Sartain g- becomes a fucking idiot out of nowhere yeah. because there is no reason for him to believe that Allison is telling the truth about, oh, he spoke to me. No, he spoke to me, right? Yeah. It's, it's so dumb. Yeah. And then he slams on brakes merely 500 yards away yeah. from other police officers. <laughs> yes. Oh, can we talk about these cops? I fucking love that. Yeah, I love How it. do we feel about the Bon Me conversation? I love it. It was genuine. Can we all reference back to the Halloween 5 police officers? The with Keystone the Cops music. <laughs> the cop, a, a grown-ass man eating brownies for dinner. Fuck it. I, sure. Fuck it, Dustin. But what else... What else was in that container? Was that like pudding or something? Yeah. That was chocolate pudding. Okay. When's the last time you had a cosmic brownie, Dustin? Ugh, it's a cosmic brownie. <laughs> I had one this morning and it was phenomenal. He had a cosmic gumbo for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Detective Crashmore. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's a police officer in Haddonfield <laughs> on Halloween. You guys fucking suck. Um, yeah. He can eat whatever the fuck he wants. It's just, it's a weird it's such a weird scene to have these guys 
like improving a bit about like a peanut butter and jelly bond me. But I love but it. I think it's genuine as fuck. I love it too, but it's so strange. Well, the, the movie needed more scenes like that to justify having that part in it. I agree. Again, humanizing our victims is yeah. what's going to hit us harder. Right. Yeah. But it's that scene and then the Julian and Vicky scene yes. that are just both like they feel like they're in an island. And I want I did. Yeah, I agree. If the, if we're going to have jokes like that, then we I think we need to have a few more or just mm-hmm. a few other scenes that feel naturalistic. We also have the kid with the dancing classes yeah. in the beginning of the movie. That was genuine as fuck. That's true. You're right. You're right. Like the kids in this movie is uh, to me like are the younger kids, not the teenagers, but sure. the younger kids in this movie are, are fucking amazing. Yeah. They're <laughs> the highlight of this just movie. Kings. And you can feel Danny McBride all over the script yes. and those kid scenes. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, the, this Bond Me scene is straight out of Eastbound and Down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the Righteous Gemstones, which I don't know if y'all have had a chance to watch. It's fantastic. So, oh, yeah. hell yeah. But this, to me, I took it as another kid scene. Yeah. Like, I took it as, like, it's just two cops who've been on, like, yeah. patrols and, do, like, they've been on, I don't even know what to call them. I'm not a cop, but. Wait a minute. You're not a cop? You have to tell us. Yeah. If you're on a if you're on a podcast and you're a cop, you have to tell yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> So I don't know what you'd call them stakeouts. Let's call them stakeouts. Yeah, they yeah. They're, on, they're on patrol. Yeah. So they've been on plenty of stuff together and they've talked about everything under the sun and they're just like, you know what? I've never talked to you about what a banh mi sandwich is. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a really good point. But you know what I think is really sweet is that he went out of the way. He's like, I, I, w- I went out of the way and I got the people at the deli yeah. to make you this. Yeah, like, it's, it's good. It's a very nice gesture. Like they're friends. It's very heartfelt. It like is. I, w- I wouldn't mind a procedure rule that's just like the the tales of these two cops just on like low stakes yeah. episode like things happening around Haddonfield. Yeah. Law and order bond me unit. <laughs> and and the last and the last episode, the last episode of that series is uh Michael Myers making a jack o' lantern out of one of their heads. Doing more arts and crafts. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a dark ending. It's a dark ending to the lighthearted comedy. No no what you do is you end it like the Sopranos, but like it's them Oh, is that Hawk into the distance? And then they just drive off and then we just fade to black. <laughs> oh shit. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a the 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 series match is supposed to be a comedy about Vietnam, which sure. uh, in theory is a fucking stretch, right? Yeah. But it comes to like one of the funniest characters telling a woman to tell her chicken to shut up. Yeah, yeah but comes out it was That monologue is insane. Yeah. It was her baby yeah and and she suffocated the baby it's a great lighthearted show yeah that's how it's gonna end thanks for bringing that up bud yeah wow fuck yeah. <laughs> have you even <laughs> listened to the super podcast? <laughs> can we Jesus. talk about how disgusting a peanut butter and jelly bomb meat sandwich sounds <laughs> my question is would it just be because like his i mean like he points out the bond me really refers to the bread yes. so is it just the bread with peanut butter and jelly or, or we got or we got carrots on that bitch Ugh. we got fucking god i hope not but also this is just more peanut butter in this franchise yeah. yeah was Alice's dad involved with this like <laughs> he who put knows? his penis in that Bob Mean sandwich alright can we get back to the murder and stop talking about <laughs> sandwiches did the curse of Michael Myers like did he eat this sandwich whole yeah. who knows we get uh, Michael arriving to the house yeah and uh, Lori telling Judy Greer uh, to go down into the secret room yeah. go baby and then one of the best parts of this movie to me Michael bursting his hand Mm -hmm. not only through the glass of the door yeah but also the steel grated door that we saw earlier in the movie (laughs) it's a it's a very evil dead shot Mm -hmm. when she's up against the wall with the gun and she uh, another movie with someone's fingers getting blown off yes Yes. which i will i do feel like uh Lori, I mean, as much as she prepared for this night, she's deaf now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not only that, but I feel like she should have saw that coming. Yeah, yeah. Michael never has the upper hand in yes. this sequence. No, no, I love that. Not once. I love it. it. The tables have fucking turned, and the only time she ever brings up Ray is as she's as judy greer's coming down the stairs she's like where's ray and she's like get the fuck downstairs <laughs> yeah in the fucking basement <laughs> michael's here we'll talk about that later go but also <laughs> the the wide shot of michael having Lori off the ground and just continually slamming her head into the door Jesus holy Christ. shit i laugh so fucking hard insane dude did you guys think when you saw this the first time that laurie was gonna be just killed immediately in this sequence Mm, i don't think so i thought she was gonna die i thought i was scared for all three of the strodes at this point yeah i can't recall the first time i saw it if i was or not but 
I don't know. I just I don't think Judy Greer or Judy Greer. I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis is going to die. And if she does, it's going to be in the last one. So I don't know if I in the moment how I felt. But yeah, well, they they hadn't really officially announced the the sequels until like the. Yeah, it was it was mm-hmm. over the weekend when the first one came out. I think you might be right. I don't remember. Yeah, they didn't announce it until right after this release. Mm, OK, I'm OK with uh jamie lee curtis if she dies in this next movie i'm okay with it um i'd rather judy greer again judy greer did nothing to my family nothing what is to me. your problem with judy greer <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> i'm just saying let's think about it let's look at the three lorry or let's look at the three strokes the three lorries the three jokers the three jokers right I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you what jt the the only way i would be satisfied with judy greer's character going out is if michael's choking her and as he's choking her, she screams outlaw country and then he breaks her neck. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay. All so all right. So anyways, what I was saying was <laughs> let's think about the three uh the three strokes. Let me go. All right. So you got Lori, who is, mm-hmm. you know, uh yeah. And then you got the dynamic between her and her granddaughter. <laughs> wait, wait, what are we doing? <laughs> this is such a well thought out analysis, JT. Let's ju- he just wants us to look at them. Are you gonna list her stats? Basically basically look at it. Let's who sticks out the most. Guys, just look at them. Uh-huh. All right, look, she has plus three dexterity. Yeah. She has <laughs> it's funny because I have my notes written. I'm taking my fucking headphones off again. <laughs> well, so but these these three do combine to form Exodia, right? Stop. <laughs> Guys, it's fucking hilarious because I have my notes written on the back of a D and D five E character sheet. God, you're a fucking nerd. Um, do they combine to form like the final girl version of Voltron? Yes. Yeah. No, no. Look, I'm just saying the granddaughter wants to, the grandmother involved completely. Just look at them. <laughs> look at them. God damn it! Let me prove a fucking point. Uh-huh. So we got we got Lori, we got Anastasia, we got. <laughs> And all right, so it's been real. My name is JT. Thank you guys for having me. All I'm saying is the grandmother and the granddaughter dynamic has always been wanted. Like mm-hmm. the, the granddaughter, Allison's always wanted a relationship with Lori. Yep. The grandmother has had this broken relationship with her. Mm-hmm. If Judy Greer dies, it happens. All right. I'm okay with it. So you're saying Lori and Allison can have a relationship if they just kill the mom? <laughs> kill. Get that pesky mom out of the way. <laughs> yes. They're going to beat the fuck out of her. Oh, he's going by land before time rules. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> As all good movies do. Of course. Yeah. Because fucking, no, that was a great movie, okay? <laughs> I never wanted to eat a leaf in my entire life until that movie. <laughs> Dustin, I think we're at the ending. Yeah, we are at the ending. I think we are. Yeah. <laughs> how, how long have we been recording? Jesus Christ. Almost, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, been yeah. a minute. So we get to the ending here, and Nathan, before I have you recap, I just got to say, I have a drop that is like perfect for this, and this <laughs> is Lori's inner monologue as Michael shows up. You came to my house! And she's like, I ain't fucking <laughs> <laughs> yes so, nathan why don't you recap yeah. what happens here at the end all right so yeah michael has killed ray um allison has arrived at the house and has gone down into the basement with her mom uh the shape chucks stabs Lori and chucks her at a window mm-hmm. and then she vanishes in my f- favorite moment in the movie <laughs> my, my well one of my favorite moments in the movie and he rips the kitchen island that's covering the little uh shelter mm-hmm. down there up from the floor which is wild and in one of the most ple- like genuinely like pleasing moments in the film yeah i can't do it i can't do it mom i need your help and then karen says gotcha and shoots him in the face yes. yeah like she plays that so well mm-hmm. of like pretending to be like the victim yes. like oh my god i can't do it and then the moment he steps into her line of sight just gotcha it's it's so good right in the neck and then she uh Lori pops out of the darkness beats the shit out of michael wait what did she say beforehand happy halloween michael uh <laughs> Okay, yeah. See, it's so cringe you couldn't even say it. If it didn't have the line, I would love it. Fuck you. I love it. I'm not. I, I'm here for it. I'm not okay with it. I, I would like it if it wasn't immediately preceded by the gotcha line, which I think is a better moment. Yes, I agree. It's a hat on a hat. Yes. It's a mask on a mask. Yes. Mask on a mask. And so uh, they reveal that it's actually, it's not really a shelter. It's a trap. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lo- they close Michael down in the basement after uh, uh, shit, what is her name? Allison. Allison gets in a few stabs and a few slashes at Michael. To mm-hmm. save her mom. Yeah, and they 
they set the house on fire. Michael doesn't even flinch as an explosion happens behind mm -hmm. him. Just stares at them. Which yep. all cool guys do. You're correct. <laughs> cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> Hop in the back of a truck and as they speed away from the burning house where Michael is suddenly not seen on the stairs anymore, mm -hmm. the camera pans down to Allison holding, still holding the bloody butcher knife. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. It's very Rob Zombie final shot yeah, with the freeze frame. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to say earlier with it, but when she finds the mannequins in the woods and she screams, that felt very Rob Zombie ish to me too. Like she was snapping. Yeah. A little bit. I I love that shot. To oh, be it's honest. a good shot. Like, um, I, I think it's just her being absolutely terrified yeah. because she's never been to her grand. Maybe she'd been to her grandmother's house, but never saw the mannequins and shit. To, yeah. To me, what that what that scene what that moment says is the cycle of violence won't end with with Lori. like yeah. she has got to this girl will now live the rest of her life yes. waiting for the moment when she has to fight again yeah but it also felt very similar to four's ending with jamie with the knife yes yeah yeah a bit for sure a little bit i think it's very good uh camera editing and everything to like conspicuously not show michael at the end because yeah you could it's really well done it's genius if this was like only lego sequel we got and it just ended here it would be still pretty ambiguous i think yeah but to know that we're picking up right after this in the next one i'm all here for but here's the thing you know what else is a trap instead of that that actual trap mm. a bullet to the head that they had a complete line of sight to do sure what if the next movie starts off and michael is just wielding all the guns that are down there in the <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing it is wild that like rob zombies michael myers never picked up like an ak which yeah. i think is in like some of the like uh rejected halloween sequels he definitely used guns i mean there's one where he's wearing a leather jacket and leather pants the entire time so <laughs> anything could yes. happen well he did use a gun in four yes. but it was to impale a As woman a spear. to a door <laughs> yeah. yeah that's rock and roll but the next movie starts and it's just angel's entrance from hot fuzz when he comes back into town <laughs> right <laughs> For riding a horse? <laughs> yeah, no, look, no one taught him to drive, but also no one taught him how to use a gun. So he's like, is this how I do it? <laughs> and impels a woman to a door. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's learning as he goes along. I would pay so much money to see that. Him riding a horse with shotguns on his back. A white yeah. horse. Yeah, <laughs> a white horse. A pale horse, if you will. That's low-hanging fruit that some people will get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we get into all the, uh, the wrap-up here, the prop cops and all that, uh, Mally, you actually did some work for once. You read a book. I read a whole fucking book. Wow. <laughs> From cover to cover. Uh, what's the book you read? And tell tell our audience who may not be familiar with it what the book is about. Um, it is Taking Shape 2, The Lost Halloween Sequels by Dustin McNeil and Travis Mullins. Mm -hmm. I also highly, I highly recommend this and also Taking Shape 1, which is all about the making of the original. Um, but yeah, it just covers basically all of the unproduced scripts, treatments, and pitches for every single sequel to Halloween. Okay. Fuck yes. All the way from at all the way from two leading up to this one. Mm -hmm. And there's a number that almost got made before they went with the Danny McBride, David Gordon Green version. Yeah. And boy. I heard there was a sequel where like these two kids were going to go witness Michael Myers execution on death row <laughs> is that is that still a thing because i heard that whole spill and i was like fuck yeah there's some that that's kind of kind of yes so all right here's a list this is the here are the names of the failed halloween scripts <laughs> between rob zombies halloween 2 and this one I'm, I'm so excited yeah me too so there's Halloween 3D, Boo. which picks up directly after the theatrical version and follows, you know, Scout Taylor Compton's Lori mm -hmm. as she's in like a mental hospital and she ends up basically becoming evil with Michael and they do this whole thing. Ugh. And this would have been the crew that did uh, My Bloody Valentine, right? That yes. would have made that one. Yes. yes. Which I'm not going to lie, Scout Taylor Thompson did not did a horrible job. Like, she she was an amazing actress. She was fine. No, I, I love her. Um, Move on. Next question. Move on, next question. <laughs> but so it ends with it like they they become like a horror, like brother and sister team up thing. Stupid as shit. She ends up like dying in his arms. Mm -hmm. Okay, weird. And it's very it's it's adorable. 
And then coinciding with that Halloween 3D script, there was another script also called Halloween 3D. Oh, uh-huh. that fun. went off the theater or went off the director's cut and assumed that she was dead uh-huh. and is all about Sheriff Brackett going after Michael. Like Dorf. Yeah. Eh, that might have been okay. Yeah, these are both sequels to Rob Zombies 2. He fucking he did an amazing job in that movie. He was good. He was maybe my favorite part of the zombie films. He's great. He's good. He fucking was. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But anyways, go ahead. Um. So yeah, that one was all about like pretty much like Michael coming after him now. Why not? Okay, cool. And then there was Halloween 3.0. Jesus Christ. <laughs> which was not a sequel to any existing Halloween films. It was a sequel. It took place on the internet? No, it was a... <laughs> yeah, the USB drive? Like- it was a sequel to an unmade remake? Huh? I'm sure that would have worked. It's... Yeah, exactly, Nathan. <laughs> I want you to explain. <laughs> so it starts rehashing the end of the original Halloween, but taking place in like 2005 Fuck with that. completely recast people and then picks up and basically kind of does their own sequel to a remake that didn't exist. No, thank you. Yeah. And then Dustin mentioned, I was texting in the group chat early about this. <laughs> there was a pl- almost, it was an unofficial Platinum Dunes produced script. Mm. I've heard about this one. Which Dustin was like, I don't know, man, that could be pretty good. Mm. Um, spoilers, it's not. Okay. <laughs> it revolves around young Michael and his friend Sean what? getting kid <laughs> getting kidnapped uh, Sean Michael <laughs> <laughs> just it, yeah the title was actually Halloween <laughs> last Christmas <laughs> the title was Halloween sweet chin music <laughs> <laughs> but it revolves around Michael and his young friend Sean getting kidnapped by a strange man huh? and <laughs> flashes because Judith was supposed to be watching them, but she wasn't paying attention and they got kidnapped. What a bitch. And Judith's younger sister, Lori, and her friend Rachel saw it happen and did nothing. Cool. Huh? So then it jumps ahead to Judith. Dude, these kids counselors at Crystal Lake. <laughs> and Rachel being older and the shape coming after them, and their older brother, Daniel Myers, who Mm, is now a cop, like, he teams up with Loomis, who is not a psychiatrist and doesn't know Michael Myers. Oh, God damn it. He is now, like, an FBI profiler, like fucking Jodie Foster in fucking Silence of the Lambs. Uh So it's it's Michael's older brother, Daniel, and Loomis and Rachel and Lori hunting down the shape, and they end up killing him, but then it's revealed that it's not Michael, it's his buddy Sean. Fuck. <laughs> Classic Sean. It's a paramedic <laughs> where they crush his larynx and so he couldn't talk. It ends with Judith Myers coming home from work and seeing the shape and going, oh, Michael, and then it ends. Oh. <gasps> Were they kidnapped by the man in black? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. The men in black, plural, like... Yeah, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith show up. That sounds insane. Now, that's a fucking sequel I would watch. Yeah. Oh, no. Wait until you hear this next one, Nathan. Oh, boy. There was a full reboot trilogy planned. Yeah, yes. this is what I was talking Son about. Son of a bitch. The three titles. Here are the three titles. The first one, Rise of the Boogeyman. Meh. The second... The Witching Hour and three fires of is it? I don't. I can never pronounce it. I know it's not Sam Hain. That's yeah. It's Samhain. Well, they say it's they say Sam Hain in the movies, but it's pronounced Samhain. Samhain. Yeah. yeah. So the first one was Michael Myers is never addressed by name. He's only referred to as the Boogeyman. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm okay with that and, honestly. Like, I'm- and it's Loomis on his first day working at um, Smith's Grove, and okay. he he meets Michael and like he learns that Michael like killed his family, blah, blah, blah. Michael escapes and goes after these people. And this random girl named Jennifer has a prophet, like sees this in a vision, warns them, but they get killed anyway. And then Loomis ends up becoming Jennifer's doctor. And she talks about how she can see into this alternate dimension. It's kind of like the upside down in stranger things. Uh. And she ends up, she ends up immolating herself. And then, all of a sudden, like, 
fucking Loomis starts having visions of this upside down world. This is like that version of the Halloween 6 script where Tommy Doyle could use VR to see hell. Yeah. 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 The first one ends with the shape going to Loomis's wife's house because, yes, he has a wife and kid. Bless their heart. And murdering, like, it just ends with the wife opening the door, seeing who it is and screaming. The second one, Loomis's son is missing, his wife's dead, and, like, he's experiencing all these weird fucking visions, and it takes place in, like, Chicago and all this shit, and he ends up kind of going crazy and murders his own therapist, Mm -hmm. and then the third one takes place in a town near Haddonfield, um... What's the sheriff's name? Bracket? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's back, and it's all about, like, Lo- it's kind of like Halloween 5. Like, Loomis and Michael have this weird psychic connection, <laughs> and they end up, like, Loomis kills himself in order to destroy Michael, okay. and it was all really bad. But Classic. the writer did say his dream casting for young Loomis was Killian Murphy. Ooh. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. I fuck with that. And then there's still two more before we get to 2018. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, real quick, real quick. I would love to see, like, like a like a Batman year one, but with Dr. Loomis. Yeah. Like that shit would be so fucking sick. Yeah. That's kind that's kind of what the first of that trilogy was supposed to be. Hmm. Um and it also ties in, it like brings back like the druid shit and all that. No. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. No, no one cares. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. Oh yeah, because it like it all like the the underground world, like the portal is opened on Halloween and no. all this shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say they're 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 making a statement in the production design uh, of Halloween 2018 when we see the thorn rune in the bathroom stall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I love. And then there was Halloween Asylum. Mm-hmm. This is the third version of this script because this script all first came out, like was first in line like before Resurrection, I think. Mm-hmm. There were two versions then and then the 2013 version was it's basically just like Michael like is in Smith's Grove and he just it all takes place in the hospital and he just murders a bunch of people inside the hospital. Okay. Uh, and then I think the one Nathan knew about was Halloween Returns. That's the one I think that got the closest to being made too. Yeah, which is kind of similar to 2018 in that it both both of them completely ignore anything besides the original. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And Halloween just walks into town and says, "I'm back, baby." Pretty much. <laughs> I actually don't I on I, I have to look up halloween returns because i don't remember much about it i got the book in front of me that's the one where loomis becomes the penguin <laughs> that would be amazing actually Yo, can you imagine like okay let's, let's just do some spinoffs here loomis versus hannibal lecter or like some you know like intelligent shit jt we're almost three hours into this i'm not having this conversation <laughs> i was looking for a gun cock sound effect right there all right well i hope your schedule is fucking clear no so halloween returns is basically just like like Lori, like it takes place directly picks up directly after the original like mm-hmm. loomis and Lori are sent to the hospital but then that's it they don't appear again and he, michael just gets away and goes and chases other people interesting but it would have been a it would have taken place in the 70s that's cool uh no it then it a little bit hap- like the beginning takes place right after the original but oh. then it jumps ahead like 10 years or some shit interesting yeah none of them were good yeah. all right <laughs> well thank you Thank you for that tour. Well, guys, we're long in the tooth here, so let's get to Prop Cop real quick. So uh, for new listeners, this is, I mean, it's just easy to understand. We're just taking props from the movie that we like, and we're staking our claim in them. So, uh, Nathan, this is your pick. Mm-hmm. You go. You get to go first. Uh, I want the I want the brownie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looked delicious. That's fair. He made that himself. It was great. It looked ooey and gooey. That's fair. But do you want the pudding that goes with it? Yes. I want to okay. dip the brownie in the pudding. What oh, am I, an asshole? <laughs> God, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> JT, what about you? Prop cop. Thank you. I want the Frank. Frankenstein DJ booth that was at the dance. <laughs> oh, that's a good pool, actually. Good that's pool. the best part about that dance scene. Yeah, I agree. Was the Frankenstein monsters DJ booth? Yeah, right. good pool, good pool. Uh, Mally, because uh, y'all are fucking idiots. I want the envelope full of three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. You don't want that Sony XBR or whatever voice recorder they use that sounds like shit in real life? No, because I'll have $3,000. I can buy one of my goddamn stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. shit's only like a $159 at your local Best Buy. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have so much money left. You guys are idiots. I, 
I originally was going to go with uh, Sartain's pen knife that he uses to stab Hawkins. That's pretty cool. That's good. My second was going to be Karen's hunting rifle that's got the KS and the lightning bolt carved that's into dope. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, I guys, I just want something practical nowadays. I'm going with Ray's yo-yo <laughs> that he's playing with. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. You can do like the Eiffel Tower and yeah. all that shit. It'd be Fuck great. Yes. He is such a genuine dad. That's awesome. Yeah. I want a yo-yo. I haven't had a yo-yo in years. Do you remember the yo-yo ball that like would retract itself though, yeah like, man you can pretend you have some skills but you really yeah yeah it was like it, it had an automatic transmission in it <laughs> <laughs> yes but here's the thing but what's funny is a, out of all the prep work that Lori had to prevent like this person from coming in and killing us she had a yo-yo later mm -hmm. so you don't get bored in the basement no i like to think that ray brought that from home <laughs> <laughs> with peanut butter yeah and bread i gotta get my traveling yo-yo he brought a jar of peanut butter and he brought a yo-yo that's all he needs to keep himself entertained oh i got peanut butter on my yo-yo <laughs> <laughs> you know when like your wife's expecting or your girlfriend's expecting you pack a bag mm -hmm. i felt like this entire family has a michael myers bag like like a go bag yep. like when michael myers escapes they you have a bag packed to go to Lori's house yeah and ray's is just filled with peanut butter and yo-yos <laughs> right oh. <laughs> exactly that makes me happy that makes me that yeah that fills me with joy the fact that he died like that yeah let's let's talk about bit part uh this is where we fantasy cast ourselves as one of the smaller unnamed roles in this movie. Oh shit, this is this is new for me. Oh, this is new. Okay, well I'll give you time to think of one. Basically, it's just like I said, it's you take a character in the movie that doesn't have a name, that has a very small part, and instead you are putting yourself in that role. So I got one. Can I go to first? Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna go with the uh the um I can give you time to think. <laughs> All right, so Nathan, who would you not the podcaster, but the uh the what do you call it? The uh, the 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 graveyard take like caretaker of the graveyard oh, there caretaker. you go sure there we go i'll take that that's pretty small the one that says bernie mac is buried there yeah <laughs> yeah they got bernie mac <laughs> yeah yeah they have a they have a jazz they have muddy waters yeah. and bernie mac yeah <laughs> it's a great line it's a really good line no, oh, oh i want the insane asylum that says figaro oh yeah. over and over and over <laughs> All right. That's a good one. Well, it's funny you say that, JT, because my pick is the crazy umbrella man. Yeah. <laughs> he gets a hero shot. I know. Like a sweeping shot. He does have big Mally energy. <laughs> yeah. Catch me and Mally down Mally's Alley Insane Asylum. Because <laughs> let's be honest, if there's two people that are going to end up in a fucking asylum, it's me and JT. Fuck mm -hmm. yeah. Hey guys, I'm going to make a, an executive decision. Nathan, I don't even want to hear your bit part, and I'm not going to say mine. We're just going to be all be the guys in the insane asylum. Yeah. The guys yeah, in, the, in the yard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> my, can I say my runner-up then? Yes, yes. I want to be the DJ because he's ripped to shit. Did you guys see how yoked the fucking DJ was? <laughs> Why was he that buff? He was built like fucking Trent Reznor. <laughs> have y'all ever have y'all ever fucking spun a record? That shit is hard. It was insane. I want to, um, well, my backup is going to be the guy that gets his head turned into a jack and land. Yes. That's fair. Which is the special effects. God, I wish I could think of his name. Who, the special effects guy that did that? His name's Christopher Nelson. He did the makeup for this, Kill Bill, uh, mm. yeah. Sin City. Well, guys, the time has come. Uh, almost three hours in. <laughs> We're going to talk about silver linings. Yeah. I I will go last. Oh, no. Of course you will. I never assume any differently, Mally. Good boy. Nathan, yeah. let's start with you. Silver lining. Um, Lori's got her family back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have another silver linings, but I do want to say like... Fine. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that like her family now knows the boogeyman is real and that she's not just full of shit is a big deal. Yeah. She's not crazy. <laughs> she's not crazy and it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest here, her training with her daughters saved their lives. Yeah. That's a great point, man. I think it's a big deal for Lori. But I'm since I'm already talking, I'm gonna go second. I like to say Allison. Okay. She faced um the boogeyman and confronted the boogeyman in the same night yeah came face to face with him after after oscar's death and had the guts to stab him after like you know he was attacking her mother and she was able to stab him and yeah. come out of it so i think it's a big thing for allison as a teenager I, yeah so that's mine yeah but well, that is a rite of passage we all remember the first time we stabbed a serial killer <laughs> with, with our mom and our grandma yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's kind of like a, a thing we do well my, that kind of piggybacks, or I guess more segues into what my original one was going to be, which was mm -hmm. that the Strode women have now reconciled their differences, like they are a family unit. Yeah. True. But 
I feel like your two silver lines kind of meld into that. So I'm going to come up with one that I just I just thought of now. And I'm I think I may be close to what Mally picked mm. as a silver lining. Doubt it. Lori got three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Money, 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 money. Yeah. And then Allison got $3,000. Is that close, Mally, or no? No, you are not close to mine at all, actually. Okay. Well, what is yours? You'll find out on October 15th. Shit. Oh. <laughs> it's Ray because she was he was married to Judy Greer. Yeah. You know, the silver lining isn't a character, right? <laughs> <laughs> silver lining, Ray got to do those sweet yo-yo tricks. Hell yeah. <laughs> Before he died, he left something behind. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh, listener. I I would not fault you if you thought, "Hey, guys, those were some pretty shit silver linings." <laughs> don't worry, we've got you covered with our double feature. Well, they don't know if mine's bad or not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, this is the is this the first mystery silver lining? I think it has to be. Yeah, <laughs> I want like a whole. I want like a whole like Smash Brothers like guest character trailer like built on <laughs> his Matthew silver, silver lining. lining. For this <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about our double feature. So new listeners here, this is where we pair Halloween 2018 with another movie as a back-to-back double feature uh, to improve things, improve your mood upon finishing Halloween. So, uh, Mally, how about we start with you? What is a pick-me-up alternative or a double feature to Halloween? I mean, I feel like it's a bit obvious, Mm -hmm. but like... If I see Will Patton, the first thing that comes to mind is gone in 60 motherfucking seconds. (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, Nathan, what about you? For me, uh, if you if you want a more uplifting, more exciting movie with pumpkins and explosions, look no further than Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good tie in. (laughs) Which, oh, boy. Wait till No Way Home. (laughs) I love Judy Greer. I don't feel like I get enough of her in this movie. Yeah. And she is also in another movie that I think is great. I think you should watch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, nice. hell oh, yeah. yes. I think those apes trilogies, like, I think it gets not nearly as much appreciation as love as it should. Those are all great movies. I fully agree. Yeah. Plus, that's just where you get um Woody Harrelson saying probably one of the greatest lines in movie history, oh. which is... And there truly will be a planet of apes. <laughs> this will be, yeah. <laughs> it's like Will Forte in Last Man on Earth going like, it truly was a Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> so I'm assuming if you're watching Halloween 2018, you enjoy horror movies. So I'm going to go off something I've watched recently, and that is Malignant. Yes. Uh, I watched that recently, and oh my God. Oh boy. <laughs> As a horror movie, I had the absolutely i had the best time watching it. Yes. is it a good one fuck no it's not <laughs> which hang on nathan have you watched it yet i'm watching it this week yes. i am like i have literally had like no free time to watch it but i'm going to carve out some time to do it this i week. cannot wait it is so look all i can say is it is it's almost an action movie but a horror movie it is fantastic he's it's tailor made for nathan it I is think. yeah i think so too like it is like <laughs> if you have like golden retriever vibes and you only have like a moment to like pay attention to something <laughs> that is the movie to pay attention to okay all right fellas real quick best kill of the movie oh man for me it's it's one that happens off screen i think the i think the cop with his head on the flashlight is great that's yeah. pretty fucking sick yeah. yeah jt what about you i vote oscar just because of the build-up mm. what happened even though part of it happened on screen part of it happened off screen i think the build-up the tension the suspense everything was just too fancy fantastic to overview value 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 <laughs> oh yeah hold on hold on bam 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 value 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 bam bam it's a, bam it's a feature <laughs> it's a feature <laughs> it's a feature it's a feature <laughs> mally what about you best kill um the podcasters yeah. specifically aaron yeah. like yeah. god watching him get his face smashed in is just so fulfilling <laughs> You think people, I think some of our audience members think the same thing about us. <laughs> yeah, probably. They probably want to beat the, us. The, the same thing about some of us, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fucking JT. Yeah, well, I'm, al- I'm only here once a year. So anyway, that's, that's the point. Like the Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Michael Myers. Ooh. No, right. My favorite kill of the movie is one that we, I mean, you guys didn't seem to enjoy too much, but I think it's the woman that gets the knife through the throat. 
the back of the neck. It's a good kill, yeah. for sure. It is a solid kill. Yeah. Just thinking about that in reality of like, you're just looking out the window. Next thing you know, you're getting your head slanted to the desk and a knife shoved through the back of your neck. Oof. That's, that's, no, my favorite kill is off screen as well. And that's the infant in the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jeez. That's an honorable mention. And also, there's another honorable mention, if you don't mind me. Uh, Dr. Sartain's death scene. Yeah. His brain shits out. Yeah. You know, we've all <laughs> wanted Michael Myers to say something. He just took it to an took it to an extreme. What if he did say something right after he said that? No, I want it. It would have been really cool if he just said the word something and then smash his head. <laughs> something. No, okay, DC, I need you to go through this movie and just edit in random Danny McBride lines for Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. You're fucking out. I'm fucking in. <laughs> that's that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. All right. Well, real quick, guys. Uh, do we recommend this movie? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think we even need to expound on that. I think no. it's just a resounding yes around the horn. Done. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. This has been a real love fest. Yeah. For sure. Are you sure? Because I can I can go on another three hours. No, about... no. That's okay. 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 We really like. We really played a big game of limp mental limp biscuit with this movie. <laughs> the last thing I want to do here is we've done nothing but talk about this movie and as well is. Let's watch the trailer for Halloween Kills, guys. The first trailer. First trailer. Yeah. You better make sure you better make sure it's the right fucking trailer. I'm gonna get so mad. The first trailer, yes. It's the first trailer. And you know, this is just because this movie is coming out the week this episode comes out, or if not, around the same time. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this fucking movie. Yeah. I'm feeling some Halloween thrills right now. Yeah. Right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my Halloween fields. Let's watch this trailer. <laughs> Oof. Chills. Yeah, me too. That's a fantastic way to, you know, for him to be still be alive, you know? Oof. Guys, I've always wanted to see Michael Myers with an, with an axe. So, I can't wait. That is actually called like a uh, trudging or something like that. Yeah. God damn, dude. I cannot wait. My grandmother was right. The boogeyman was real. It's over. You can't hurt anyone ever again. You don't need to watch this, son. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> no one told you. I'm sorry, guys. He's Tell not. Yeah, you yeah. can't watch this. I'm just now learning that JT there. is a kid and I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's my stepson. Michael Myers is alive. This is a segment I'm so fucking... Oh! By the way, isn't that the caretaker from the first movie? Oh, yeah, I think maybe. The cemetery caretaker? Yes. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm so excited for that entire segment. I just get so vibes from two. Oh, fuck. This re this new version of the theme. Dustin, that's Julian's parents. Yeah. If you track Michael's victim, that's a straight line. To that's hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. What do we do? We fight. There's a... Uh, Tommy Doyle. Yeah. I love this. Like, Michael sounds Myers like Apocalyptica doing the cover, the cover mm -hmm. of the Halloween the theme. Yeah. Survived that fire. And I love how they say, I don't know how she, he could have survived that fire, as it shows how he survived that fire. <laughs> right. He's sort of. of evil. Oh, there he is. Yeah doing his best you know i still exactly i think this dude is doing his best i really don't give a shit do it do it you want your mask come and get it see i want I'm that that's you. what i'm excited for in this movie yeah the showdown with the, the mob yes yeah. yeah well just like we talked about this with Freddy versus Jason. I wanted just a slasher movie where the whole town is like, no, 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 fuck this. Yeah, fuck this. We're done. No, we ain't fucking dealing with this shit anymore. I w I'm so excited for that part of the movie. I want to <laughs> trick or treat safely. Yeah. yeah. I love Anthony Michael Hall and like uh, the the intensity he's bringing in just that trailer has me excited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love how Mally's silent and I want to say thank you, Mally. Mm hmm. <laughs>
Well, listener, if you've made it this far, first of all, congratulations on the marathon. Bless. <laughs> um, if you have thoughts... M- may the good Lord keep you. <laughs> if you have thoughts on Halloween 2018, uh, please send them in to... the Keep them to your goddamn self. <laughs> so we don't want to hear it. <laughs> or you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Leave us a rating and some feedback. We would really appreciate that. But the absolute best thing you can do for us is to tell your friends and family about our show. Um, follow us on social media. And yeah, guys, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. Halloween was is, this is a great movie. But next week we are talking about one of my all time favorite horror movies. Yeah. So I have a clue for you. My clue is you will never be able to hear the ending credits of Robot Chicken the same again. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Nice. Mally, do you have a clue what we're talking about next week? No, absolutely no idea what movie we're doing. <laughs> I did not think so. <laughs> well, JT, thank you for coming on yeah. uh, once again to talk Halloween with us. I'm sorry I ranted. I'm sorry. Okay? Like, no, that's we love the passion. That's that's why you come on these episodes and not like... At least you like weren't recording while eating peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot to hit record. (laughs) I honestly don't know if he's joking. (laughs) (laughs) Well, fellas, uh, does anyone have any last parting words before we get out of here for the week? I can't wait for the when this is the the Halloween kills is going to be an episode. And I hope I hope we can talk about it on the show. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully I'll be invited back. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> well do hashtag we want jt and we'll see what happens maybe don't dig that <laughs> hole for yourself yeah or just meet me down Mally's alley <laughs> <laughs> with a jar of peanut butter bring your tickets Br- <laughs> byop bring your own peanut butter <laughs> i i want a i want a fan poster made of just just called Mally's alley and you just put in whatever you want, but a jar of peanut butter's got to be in there somewhere. And it's and it's Michael Myers drinking peanut butter, <laughs> <laughs> the peanut butter gutters. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Last but not least, rest in peace, oatmeal and, and Donald Pleasance. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to remind ourselves every 25 years or so. I- I'm adding it on now. Recipes, oatmeal, and on a pleasance. And <laughs> as <That's> always. A- <laughs> Say something! I'm giving up on you. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking it, but you said it. Excelsior! 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 Oh, look at us! wraps up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!